My friends, my friends, my friends. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Oh, <laughs> uh, I am very excited for this table. I honestly am. Not only because I have two. Um, God, it's so hard not to do spoilers. Um, love you. Love you. <laughs> love you. I'm sorry. I love you. That implies nothing. <laughs> Vince. Josh, thank you for coming. I don't. Why do you keep coming back? <laughs> like, do you why do we keep coming back, Vince? Like Gluttons for yeah. punishment. I think so. You know, oh, that's up to you, man. I welcome on, it. Uh, you do. You're like um, 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 yum yum yeah. yum yum yum. <laughs> Misery loves company. I, I, yes. We literally. Uh, I, I, Vince, story time. Uh, you, you two heard this, but Vince walked in. And was like, I read the whole rule book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And went and straight into it. And I sent it like uh, yesterday. Um. So yeah, yeah. Cool, man. Good. I'm glad you. are here. I'm honestly legit glad you're here. I'm Thank you for here, man. playing. Thank you. Yeah. So, Trish, Hi. it's good to see you again. You too. You know, we're doing spooky stories. It's I'm, been a while. It has been a while since the Oh God Forever verse days. Yes. It's still on Pluto everywhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I have so many friends that are like, I turned on my TV and saw you. And I'm like, wow, that was from a long time ago. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, uh, I was uh, just adding streaming services the other day and I was like, I wonder if it's still there. And I like, totally am. Yeah, yep, it's still there. <laughs> well, I have you know what to they were say. Playing? You know what they were playing? What were they playing? Puppet Land. Aww. Yeah, I know. So Bother sweet. You. But yeah, no spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen Foreververse yet. But I feel like I took I took my uh, my character out in a way that would be appropriate for Ten Candles. Uh, I actually agree with you, yeah. yeah. I also, for people who it was on that show... I, I don't know if this felt it to you. Was that like Navy SEAL training in the RPG world? <laughs> oh my God. You know? A little bit. Yeah, because it's like, okay, new system, go. Charactered by tomorrow. Well, but same psyche. Same psyche. We quantum leaped from game to game to game to game to game. Yeah. But same base character. Just same base character. It it's like you were juggling two character sheets, but then one had to be flopped out every month or so. Yeah. Yeah, it was a it was a thing. Hi, Nora. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only the one I loved playing with you on LA by Night. Yeah, it was we're the first time we played together. Ever, I know, and we're only like recent friend acquisitions. Yes. But um, that was super fun, and I was super excited when you decided to come and play. Thank so you. yeah, we got to play uh, dark characters. Yeah. As well. Yeah, yeah. It was fun being bad guys. It was. <laughs> <laughs> Although you're a sorry guys. You're a, okay. you're still you're you're just judgment's still out, so to speak. I know. So, yeah. What happens? We'll see. I don't know. Come Check it out. Or it's just uh, Geek and Sundry's just becoming a dark place. Yeah. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> well, a lot of vampires, a lot of people Dark dying. places, Ivan? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But yeah, no, thank you for all playing. This is, this is, is I love this because this series has been just so different, like uh, some days, and we were like, wow, I've never played with any of you before, and then some days I'm like, my old friends. So let's get into it, shall we? Let's yeah. yeah. right, do it. Take your, uh, you have five pictures, mm -hmm. um, which are going to be acting as our cards for this session. Um, I'd first like you to take your top one this will be the virtue and we are going to pass it to your left yeah so take it and hand it to the person to your left but write a virtue Blank? on it or no nope. do not oh. write on it oh. yet oh. Oh. take oh. it and pass it to the person to the left i see yes great now on that i would like you to write a virtue sharpie sharpie yes and you know you're either in Clan, fine or not fun when it comes to Sharpie times. So, so a virtue meaning what is something that you look up to in someone? Okay. What is something? This is something that this character would, would look up to. Yeah, what, okay. that you that you um, appreciate about someone because this is a virtue that you will be ostensibly and literally handing to someone else. Okay. Done and done. Mm -hmm. I know. I heard you stop writing. God, no. Uh. Do we have to keep it a secret? We will not be okay. keeping it a oh. secret. Uh, we're going to hand them out. This is kind of like getting your camp name when someone gives it to you. I love Except it. It's your virtue and your vice. Mm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love this collaborative character creation. It's different. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's um, because the story system is so fluid. It allows for 
uh, a lot of interpretation. And like you pointed out earlier, and I know you talked a little bit about I like my spreadsheets when it comes to my planning. Oh, you know I do. I know you do. So it was it was definitely one of those. I want you to think about it, but don't think about it too hard. Well, that's, yeah, I, I didn't plan too much for today because I am an over-prepper, and mm -hmm. then sometimes it gets me into, like, wonky gear catch situations right. when something happens that I wasn't prepared for. So yeah. Well, I, I planned my whole character. And then walked in and promptly <laughs> yeah. threw it all out. It all out. <laughs> yep, as yeah. is very there common in this. Uh -huh. uh, give them back to their owners to your right. That is for you, oh. sir. For Great. You. Uh -huh. This is not a one word thing. It, it, oh, it's it, it's it, technically a uh, one, like a virtue okay. should be something that is. If you a, say it really fast. So just the first word then, maybe. Then the first <laughs> word strength? Be yeah. Why don't you, why don't you, yeah, why don't you tell us, Nora, what did you get? Uh, strength. Yes. I can't see what the other. What did you? What is this? Uh, strength by truth. <laughs> truth gives me strength. Uh huh. Okay. Ah. So you could say. Um, so one thing. Honesty. Like, honesty. Yes. Great. Honesty. That, yeah, is I was a describing honesty. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna write that in, in the most <laughs> poetic way. <laughs> honesty. 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 <laughs> that is definitely well, a word. over here. Yeah. <laughs> So, well. I like where we're going today. So. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> Josh, one word, I write two sentences. Uh, now that all of the blood has gone to your face, why don't you go next? <laughs> so, I got resourceful. Resourceful. Very resourceful. Yes. Oh. That's also very concise. Very concise, <laughs> to the point, one word. <laughs> it's so many syllables, though. It's like the same. <laughs> Trish, what did you get? Insightful. Insightful. Mm. Okay, so we have resourceful, insightful, honest. And how about you, Vince? I got dependable. Dependable. Mm. Very practical yeah. virtues over here. Yeah, I'd say. And very, um, well, your resourceful is very practical as well, too. So it's just you. Yes. Insight yeah. Insightful is, is uh, very cerebral. So, yeah. yes. yes. Now let's take another one of your portraits and let's pass it to the right. Yes. <clears throat> now on this here, oh, no. <clears throat> on this, I would like you to write a vice, something that you would not wish upon anybody, something that you, something that creates more problems than it solves. One word again. One word. Okay. Be uh, very um, well, direct about it. So this is this is your vices. I wrote the Oxford Dictionary. <laughs> so just I received the entire Encyclopedia Britannica <laughs> on the back of mine. Miriam's Dictionary states that this time can be used in many ways. Bob. <laughs> uh, and let's pass it back, so go back to their owners to the left. Thank you. It's a great photo, right? It's a good photo. A great <laughs> I did not mean I to make that I do appreciate face. that photo. It yeah. was not on purpose. Ooh. Why don't you start us off, Vince? I got greedy. You're greedy. I'm very greedy. So greedy, and then remind me what the virtue is again. Dependable. Greedy and dependable. You're dependably <laughs> greedy. Fun contrast to play there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And how about you, Nora? Uh, covetous. Covetous. Ooh, covetous. Wow. That's Good a new word. one. <laughs> right? Yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. It brought out the Orthosaurus. Uh, <laughs> Trish, what did you get? Selfish. Selfish. Mm -hmm. Insightful and selfish. Mm -hmm. All right. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And Josh. I got blunt. <laughs> yeah, straight to the point. Straight to the point. All right, that makes a lot of sense. Um, the irony of your last. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're very honest. I like this. <laughs> You're or already twisting You're already your mental twisting. dials. I know. I yeah, know. making those mental dials. So uh, I will describe to you the situation you're in, and oh boy, do I have a treat for you today. Oh, good. Oh. Yes. Um, after much discussion before this setting, um, I'm pleased to tell you that you are on the International Space Station for this episode. Whoa. Oh, delightful. Oh. Which uh, means in so many different ways what has been happening in this world. You have only the knowledge of what you have been able to scramble, and we did discuss getting the radio to work, right, but yes. only a week after everything went down. Yeah. All right? And since then, you have been watching the Earth go through turmoil, just constant turmoil. And 
very quickly because of your position on the International Space Station, you have noticed the moon is getting closer. And it is not getting closer in the way that, oh, it's bigger in the sky, as you would see from the ground. It's physically approaching the planet. And as a result is when you are making your pass to come to where the moon is, you see every time you pass it, it's currently has it's it's coming at you it's gaining on us it's gaining at you in fact because you're in the international space station and you have actual instrumentations that allow you to measure this kind of stuff and because you were not affected by the emp that destroyed the entire planet on bottom side you were able because otherwise if i ruined you with power you'd all be dead right now because of life support in fact you probably all of your instrumentations did blip out for a brief moment Mm -hmm. but then once the solar panels kicked back in and you replaced the batteries everything was fine um but with your instrumentation you can tell that it's going at the speed of a boeing jet so basically it's at a decaying orbit of around anywhere from 430 to 500 miles an hour and that's the speed it's maintaining, and it's been maintaining for the last two and a half weeks. So at this ISS stage. is maintaining, or the moon is maintaining? The maintain, moon is maintaining that Great. speed. Great. Okay. And now you're at the position in which the moon is close enough to change and steal your orbit. And that's where we're going to start our story today. So we're doing like this bizarre figure eight kind of pattern right now with the the moon and the Earth. You haven't. The the figure eight pattern is going to start to begin. Oh, great. Yes. So ostensibly you're in a position where you know that the – actually, no, you're right. You would have actually gone through that figure eight orbit for a while where it would have stolen and then you would have exchanged it back. Yes, that makes a lot more sense because it would have stolen you way before you gotten too close to it. So – Figure eight, it's been, uh, you have been exchanging orbits with the moon as it has been closer, and that orbit has become tighter and tighter as our story begins. So, with that said, I would like you to take a third card, and I would like you to write a moment that you hope your character can achieve in this story. It has to be something that has a chance of succeeding, that can succeed, excuse me, but also has an option of failing as well, too. This is important because if you to fulfill this moment at some point in the story, you will get a mechanical benefit for it. This can be more than one word. <laughs> Thank you, Vince, yes. I was like, I'm really limited here with one word. I don't know what I can, how I can save the world in one word. I don't know. But that is, a, that is truly the, um, it is a moment that you hope your character can accomplish in the okay. story. a new ASMR. <laughs> I don't want to, I'm not trying to mow out. that's what I'm saying, so, uh, I mean, how far can I go on this? <clears throat> like, uh, Is this something you can accomplish? Po- yes. Is it something that can fail? Yes. Then write it down. Okay. You were hoping that basically you're intending this happens during the session, during the episode, and if it does, if it goes well, you, you gain a benefit. That's right. Thank you for the Oxford Dictionary version. Or the rule book version. Yeah. I read the rules. <laughs> you would think it would be the lawful neutral kid that would be like, I read all the rules, and, but not today. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, uh. Curious, Vince, your IRL alignment. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, boy. Uh, I'd like to say it's uh, neutral good. good. Well, no. You see, a lot of people <laughs> say they're chaotic good, but Mm-mm. aren't actually when push comes to shove. Okay. Chaotic neutral. Um, that's fair. <laughs> no, I'm I'm definitely more natural good, no, neutral good. Okay. I'm just you know I like doing good things, but I don't feel that every rule or regulation is necessarily the best at all times. Got it. Yeah. Hmm. How about you guys? 
<laughs> no, I think you just need to share I just, today. I would just rather look at you quizzically. Quizzically. <laughs> <laughs> rather side eye you instead of answer that question. I always I like, like that. asking people that question. I just think it's fun. It is a fun. It's a it's a fun question that only Vince gets to answer. Yes. So. Well, I, I think if Josh needed more time, it I would do. be. I'm still writing. <laughs> oh, it was a, it was a yeah. I gave it for more time. Yeah. Nice. See, you know, and you know, my uh, my favorite bit is is that I uh, I. Um, <laughs> I have enjoyed in this show, and I have been observing how lovely the silence is, and I love watching your natural host instinct get in. <laughs> you always do. Fill this dead air. Fill this space. No dead air. No dead yeah, air. you just want to make sure that it's all taken care of, and oh boy, am I loving the put place that it's putting you in right now. So, yes. So you're ready for me to be <clears throat> super uncomfortable today, is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm not ready to be comfortable. Like I, I've already been chastised for writing a sentence. I'm ready to go. Oh, this, no, is no. We're into it. this is good. Use Spe it. Speaking of being chastised, what's your uh, what's your moment? And who are you playing today, Josh? And and please introduce us. Uh, today to I'll be playing uh, Joseph Myers. Joseph Myers. Joseph Myers was a shareholder for the company that pours money into the one of the many rockets that delivers uh, supplies to the space station, and was. Uh, on a mission with a branding officer, I believe, to check out the space station and made it up there. Huh. But he is a corporate guy, and he is, like I said, a shareholder. So he has ulterior motives for the company. Got it. Uh, so he's a company man. He's a company man Yeah. Uh, who made it up here alone, however. So oh, okay. something behind that. Got it. So you made it up. Did you come with the, um, like you said, the, the, the corporate... Um, I came with a little corporate knowledge, a little bit of maybe. Uh, but you said you came with a corporate employee, or you came as a corporate employee. I came as a corporate employee. Got it. Okay, correct. Great. Um, and then, what moment do you hope to generate in this story today? Uh, activating a nuclear warhead that disrupts the moon orbit. So. Oh, so you want to detonate a warhead? Possibly, yes. Oh. That's possible. That could be why I'm up there, is to, you know. Cool. Great. Awesome. Uh, Trish, who will you be playing today? I am playing Stacy Martell. Stacy Martell. Yes. And uh, Stacy is a very well respected and highly accredited marketing director. Okay. From the United States, um, who was sent uh, to ISS by the International Space Station Program, by the, the Union of Nations that run ISS. Yeah. Um, to come up and create some videos selling the gen general populace on why the S ISS is needed. So there's a, a, this is interesting. Do you want to have it be like there's an upcoming bill to, to basically, or an upcoming proposition to pour more funding into the station and you are there to help? Yes, and in, in some nations, that's more of a thing than others right yes, now due right. to political climate. Some right. people feel that money should could be better invested elsewhere. Right. So I, uh, Stacy, uh, can spin anything. Okay. Make it look good. <laughs> and I spin was spin doctor in space. Yes. And so I was sent to the ISS to <clears throat> create a series of video packages. Okay. That convince everyone why ISS is worthwhile and why they should invest their money. Here. And what is the moment you hope to create in this story? Um, the moment that I hope to create is to um, send at least one, uh, preferably more. Of the video packages that I have created to oh. Earth. So your goal is to actually do your job. And, Spend fast. <laughs> and the, the video packages I feel like that Stacy has created while up here kind of morphed uh, in what they were from selling ISS okay. to uh, almost more of a journalistic, Oh, holy shit, this is what's happening up here. So now you become a disaster reporter. In a little bit. So it's it's a hybrid of both. Uh, <laughs> okay. So th this is still really great, but also what the hell is happening? Kind okay. Videos. Done. Mm -hmm. All right. Excellent. Uh, Vince, who are you playing today? My name is uh, Danny Barron. Danny um, Barron. <clears throat> I am the comms officer on the ISS uh, and a mechanical engineer. And uh, yeah, I just maintain the comm systems. Um, I would have been the first to realize comms had gone out when everything kind of went to hell, and yeah. the first to try working on a radio replacement to establish some sort of contact. Which we, that's great. Yeah, so ostensibly you reconnected whatever you could at this point, which at this point, which I would say, from what I know from your timeline and where you are, there has definitely been radio transmissions, but they have basically been guys in bunkers. And it's also situational in terms of like which part of the Earth we are orbiting over Absolutely. at any one moment. Sometimes you catch it, 
Sometimes you don't. <clears throat> Sometimes you hear terrible things and you've heard terrible things. Yeah. You've also heard things you cannot explain. So I do imagine you being like a sonar, you know, uh, yeah. sub guy sitting with your cans on. Yeah. On what moment phones. do you hope to create? My moment, <clears throat> uh, it says, I will gain hope when the comms flicker to life and I swear I hear my wife's voice. You want to hear your wife's voice one last time. Mm -hmm. Okay. You want to hear your wife's voice. <laughs> All right. Sounds excellent. Nora. I am playing uh, Genevieve Zane. Genevieve. Who is a microbiologist, and she specializes in um, extreme weather conditions. So her goal is on in doing research for the uh, on the ISS is to uh, hopefully find in some time in the near distant future uh, if we are able to colonize on other planets. Yes. Okay. However, so not there yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> so not there yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, She's also secretly a ancient astronaut theorist. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Writing what? books under a pseudonym. Yeah. Uh, can't tell anybody about that because uh, she wants to keep her job. Oh, I love <laughs> But I don't want to say it's aliens, but it's aliens. It's it's just, I love it. <laughs> okay, cool. And what, what moment does this, this ghost writer uh, of ancient alien um, archaeology uh, <laughs> hope to create in this oh, well, story? He wants to find out about what they are. You want to know about them. them. Okay. Capital right. T them. Yeah, capital T them. Mm -hmm. All right, great. Um, excellent. Well, that leaves us with uh, one final task before we actually begin our story. And I would like you to take a third card that is with you, um, one that hasn't been written upon yet. And we are going to pass these to the left. These are your brinks. So, what this basically means is an observation your character has made against th another character that has seen them at their darkest and lowest moment. <clears throat> now, this is going to be a little different. Oh, did, did, we, did we pass yours already? Did I pass? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so this is, this is for you and I. This is going to be a little tiny bit different because I'm actually going to participate oh. in this oh. with you. Oh. Okay. Okay. All right. So you pass to the left. And then, um, no, you're fine. You're getting okay, there. Josh. And then I'm here, and then. So I get one from you. Yes. And oh. then and then I have Trisha's, great. Okay. So what this means is you're going to observe someone at their very lowest point and basically write the, I have seen you, dot, dot, dot. And a couple of examples they give in the book are just terrible low points. Something like, um, I've seen you lose it over this dead dog. You cried for hours, and I almost left you. You know, or things like, I have seen you worship them. I have watched you whisper a silent prayer when you didn't think anyone was looking. So we've had some incredibly awful brinks um, that have come up as a result. <clears throat> it does not mean you need to write something awful. It is mm. just something that you've seen someone do. But it is like that, <clears throat> that darkest <throat> side of someone. Is Yes, it is. And for... Vince and Trish, mm -hmm. different for us. how this is going to work differently with me is, is that, Vince, you will be writing a brink for them. You get to see, you get to basically do a, I have seen them dot, dot, dot. And this can apply not just to the proverbial them, but also the situation that you've seen. These monoliths, which you have observed, have come up. The state of the moon that you have very clearly observed as it is coming into the orbit of the Earth closer and closer. And it could even be about the proverbial them, but this is your opportunity to <clears> kind <throat> of expand on our world. Yeah. And Trish, I will be writing a they have seen you, an observation that mm. them cool. has imposed upon you cool. in this circumstance. Okay. So there we go. This is so exciting. This is this is something our character has seen the other characters yes. do. This is character with our own eyes is, on the space station. This is character or knowledge. Or before. Yes. They can also like one example was uh, you know, I I have seen you on trial for the murder of your family. That's something that only you know about that person. And it could have taken place before the event or during or what have you, but it's just something you know about them that informs their character that no one else knows. I don't have a 
enough room on this car. <laughs> <laughs> my diatribe here. My... Brink Volume 1 yes. by Josh Petersdorf. Josh. In the beginning, there was the edge. <laughs> a cliff overlooking a precipice. Of what bar. would say a brink? A brink. <laughs> what would say close to the brink, close to the edge. Highway <clears> to <throat> the Danger Zone by John Cleese. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, Ivan. Um, wait. Uh, Please. I will wait. <laughs> um, and <clears throat> uh, as well, though the brinks are the one thing, uh, not virtues and vices, but the brinks are intended to be kept secret. Yes. Got it. They are kept in them to be secret. This one's always tough for me. What are you going to do to trash? What if they see me? Right? Right. I died to them. I hope you like out. <laughs> yeah, this, right? Yes. I. <clears throat> Before we actually started the game, I came up with a plan for every single person I could possibly write a prank for and what they would all be. And I was so excited about this one. I was hoping, <laughs> I was hoping that I would get this. You would write it all out before. I would. <laughs> My phone has a note on it. It's like this long. Wow. It's every... <sighs> Guys, I'm crazy. <laughs> It was 100 pages. The book was was legit. Yes. Yeah. 100 page rule book. It was, it was intimidating. Yeah. To be, to be in 12 hours. You know. It's also awesome how many different because in the appendix in the back is all like the example modules of okay. ways you can run the game, mm. and the different ways you can adapt the rules to different settings that you know do or don't include creatures or do and don't include this. Mm. It's such a flexible system. It's really awesome. He said, buying for time. Storytelling, you guys. Yeah, cooperative storytelling. They called me the long-winded writer. <laughs> 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 Ivan mean, just wants to thoroughly terrorize Trish, and I yeah. admire that. I think that's what's happening. It's good. Yeah. It takes deep thought to execute deep war. So. <laughs> yes. Honestly, only the only thing that I might enjoy more than writing a brink for them is them writing one for me. She's so. already. Yeah. This is the, the fidgeting best. has begun. The mic. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> I'm about to be real uncomfortable today. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, Ivan, I just want to preface this a of little course. bit. Uh, you are, uh, this is open-ended. You're entitled to play it however you want. Oh. Because I'm not sure what's already been established. Thank you, Fins. So <laughs> you it's intentionally a little bit vague. Okay. I just. No, I, I appreciate you letting me know. Okay. So, um, yeah. I'm dealing with it. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. shit got dark real quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well played, sir. Oh my! I want. I, I ironically know, you know what? exactly it's what the that means. All right, good. That's what I realized <laughs> when I turned it over. I was like, ah, oh. I was like, I didn't even know that was there. We're one so. and one now. Okay, yeah, got it. I have to write the brink down. I'll break your eyes, Trish. Hmm. Game secrets. Okay, now we have one more picture. Don't so look at that. That's the character oh, concept. Sorry. That's simply your name. Your occupation, oh, if you wish it. It's about as, as much of a character sheet as 10 candles will allow you to have. Okay. So, um, it's really for you. I rolled a 40 on strength, so. You're so mega stalled. <laughs> oh my god. Cool. Okay. Cool. 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 Great. 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 <laughs> um, no, no, no. So basically, what we're gonna finally do now that you have this concepts out, they will be laid close to your side. You may take your virtue, your vice, and your moment, and you may organize them in whichever stack you'd like. The only thing that's important is that the brink must be on the bottom. This is important because you can only burn the card that is on the top. Virtues and vices will allow you to reroll any ones that you might occur in the game. The brinks, should you get to it, will allow you a full reroll of everything. <clears throat> and you cannot generate your moment unless it is the card on top at the time in which that moment comes up. Wait, so what that <clears throat> means 
is, is that if you, for example, your moment came up, Joseph, in which there's a chance to detonate the warhead, if your moment isn't on top of your deck, and say you put your virtue and your vice on top of it, and you didn't rip those up as a result of doing rerolls before you got to that moment, it would not play out. Okay. But versus if you put your moment on top and your moment does not come up, you cannot get to your virtues and your vices until the moment has been completed. Got it. So this is why you have to stack the deck. Okay. And virtues and vices give us rerolls on ones, essentially. Okay. And uh, use. character sheet is not a burnable card. Mm -mm. Okay. And you said Brink was on the very bottom. Brink, Brink Must the bottom. be on the bottom. Because so. it's all you have left. Uh. <laughs> it is all you have left. Okay. It's exactly as it is. So, um, and for anyone who's keeping track, because the good news is that on the I International Space Station, um, you are working off of an atomic clock and not something that's tied to Earth's magnetic field. You're looking at. Uh, Day 19. Right day 19. Now. Day 19. Yes. <clears throat> right. And this is day 19 since the monoliths came. Since the monoliths rose, since in your perspective, a, the blip of the power went out. And <sighs> let me uh, preface this with your story begins on the International Space Station in which you are currently exchanging orbits with the moon. It has come so close into your proximity that you have managed to be able to maintain a figure eight orbit between the moon as it is constantly exchanging you and it is constant diligence. There has been someone who has taken the time and the opportunity to pilot this course. You've had a navigator on the International Space Station this entire time. And you, uh, and he has been ostensibly making every waking moment to replot the course of the International Space Station in order to maintain this. But the moon is getting closer now and everything has to be recorrected. This is something that has to be done every six hours or so. On top of that, <laughs> on top of that, you were supposed to be resupplied weeks ago when everything first started happening. <clears throat> and so far, you're three weeks behind on your food supplies. You've managed to ration as best as you can. You've been paying particular attention to your water at this stage, but you are dangerously low on supplies. Thankfully, due to the solar panels, you've been able to maintain power, but because the moon is taking up so much more of the sky than it was when it was in the ISS's original orbit, there have been long spans of night, and you are in one of those spans of night. You are running life support, <clears throat> and that's it. At this point, just the air is keeping you alive at this stage because the sun has not come back and you have been ostensibly jettisoned to the dark side of the moon. So now you're on the return course to come back to Earth, but it is still dark and the batteries are not charging due to sunlight. What do you do? <clears throat> I've been on the phones for the last hour or so, trying to again establish contact with anyone planet side. We've we've had you know spurts of uh, communication, but nothing concrete. And one very delightful song. A song. Yesterday, a rogue broadcast on a ham radio signal came up, and it was just someone, and you didn't catch their name because you had. You didn't catch the beginning of the broadcast, but it was someone singing. Someone on Earth was singing a song. And you kind of recognized it. Uh, this is ISS to Earth, uh, ISS to Houston, to Moscow, to anyone who's picking it up. Um, is anyone down there? Anyone? It's been 19 days now, and I um, uh, could really do with hearing a voice right now? <sighs> Not uncommonly, no response. 
Okay, we need to take, I don't know, we need some kind of proactive action. Because we're, it, the scrubbers are almost crapped out. Food's low, water's low. Life support is on its last legs. And we're not going to last up here for much longer. No one's coming. Have you been able to get through it all? No, I, peep, I, I'm hearing just uh, music and, and, and uh, warnings and the occasional distress signal, but no one can hear me. It, it's, it's, a, it's a fucking ham radio. I mean, we're, we're in space. So no, we gotta either find some way, I don't know, off this station or a way to extend the supplies we have so we can last until whatever's going on down there is done. I mean, forgive my naivety, I haven't spent very much time up here, but is there any way that we can it, science up some resources? Look, we have, we have the module you came in on. Yeah. You too. Um, it's, it's not, without the resupply, it's not designed to make the return trip the way it is right now. We could try and, and jerry-rig something to get us back planet side, but that would only really work if there's someone to receive us on the other end. So we're stuck here. And I don't know what other proactive measure we could take. We're already rationing our supplies out. There is definitely, and again, to keep this conversation and this story going, you beyond the rationing and supply, the more direct problem at hand is, is that uh, your course correction needs to be adjusted or something the moon most likely is going to throw you off your orbit and will send you out into deep space at this point. The module we came on still has battery power that we can transfer some of our systems life support on. When I work for the company, I learned that it is very possible to revert the systems. However, the module only fits two and the escape pods only fit three. Yeah, I don't think... Getting off is probably not an option, but that's... If we can use some of that power to help correct the course of, of the station, it, it buys us time. So we're not, you know, flung off into space. Sure. Or what have you. Um, okay, yeah, I can... Is the navigator still here on the station? Uh, you, you do know where he is. He's in a module. I, let's put him in... Let's put him in the... Uh, Zvezda Russian service module, because that sounds appropriate. That's usually where he tends to spend his time. He's been sitting there literally with a notepad and has just been crunching numbers for the last two and a half weeks, you know, making sure that every little adjustment is made in order to uh, uh, prevent prevent the slingshot effect. So and what's speak. his name? Um, let's have his name. If he's going to be in the Russian space module, we can make him Russian. Dimitri. We'll have him be Dimitri. Dimitri. Yeah. Dimitri. All right. Okay. Dimitri said he'd be in Svezda right now, uh, working on the calculations. If we can just get, in, let's get over there, get in touch with him, and see what he needs to make this work. And if we need to draw power off, I would rather not do that. But if we need to draw power off of the uh, your module, then we'll do that. Fine. But we got to keep the station in orbit. So you begin. Making well, I'm sorry. That's what you two would like to do. Is there anything else at this point that anyone else is interested in, or are we all just converging on Zvezda at the moment? Um, I know that I reported on a piece I think a few years back about uh, growing plant life here on ISS. Is there a way for us to uh, potentially expand that effort and grow vegetables, grow some type of sustenance here? We're not. We're not there yet. I mean, I'm barely, well, I'm working with single-celled organisms, just trying to keep them alive in harsh conditions. That's that's far far from being able to plant anything. I mean, we really need. If we don't get these supplies, I don't I don't know what... There is a tissue lab for genetic culturing, but it's mostly just harvesting sproutlings and seeds to see them grow. There's yeah, not enough everything here is, like, experiment-sized. It, it's not... We can't farm the ISS, at least not for this many people. Got it. Unless you wanted to convert it into something, but there are definitely enough seeds. Uh, but that is completely your prerogative. This is a uh, this is a intense survival situation, and it's nice that you guys are thinking about the long term. But you are having this conversation as you get close to Zvezda, and you the ISS is obviously a very small contain, so you're walking single file as you're making transitions from each one, doing your movements in zero g as you're getting through, and um, 
as you get close to Zvezda, you actually are looking into the open area and you can see Dimitri's clipboard is kind of swaying in the midst of the zero G and a long string that had his pen attached to it um, has been tied and wrapped around one of the chair backs and it's just kind of blissfully floating um, in the middle of this open service module. Well, that's not a good sign. Dimitri? You don't hear a response. Where the fuck did he go? Um, okay, I want to go inside the module and look around. Well, as you go into the module, kind of look around, you see that nothing's really out of place. Um, it's besides this floating clipboard that's kind of wavily moving around. Everything seems to be where it should be. Um, let me use my cheat sheet. Stacy. As you kind of get closer, you mm -hmm. grab the clipboard and you pull it forward and look it up and you can see in Russian, big red letters have been written. Do you know Russian? Um, a very, very small amounts from what I've needed as far as my interfacing right before I came to the ISS. Okay. You can definitely see and read enough for it to say, I'm sorry. Okay. What? What? What's wrong? What? This isn't good. Um, there, uh, as you can see, and I will pass it around so that everyone may examine the evidence. It's all red letters and uh, very big. And Does anyone else speak Russian? Bitch. Just conversationally, because we all work together on the ISS. See yeah. what you think, but from my limited knowledge of the Russian language, it looks like an apology. Fuck. Um, I want to go to the comms on the wall that just like intercom for the station itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I want to hit the button and I'm going to call up. Hey, Dimitri, if you're on, of course you're on the station. Wherever you are on the station, get to a comms and ping us. I don't know what the fuck you're doing not being in Svetska right now, but we need you here. I mean, do we think he just left? Like gave up left, and left? Left? Yeah, like there. went to the corner store. No, what? No, okay, like, we're all, okay, we're all tense. We're all kind of bummed out right now. But no, he's, he's still on the station. There's nowhere else to go, right? Well, you could have taken one of the escape pods and left us here. Oh, oh, oh no. Check the, check, check the monitor. I mean, honestly, we don't have the power right With now. With the emergency okay. systems on, you won't be able to check statuses of anything unless you physically investigate them because at this point it's maintaining life support with its red dim light. I can't tell if it's gone or not. And you Board's can't off. Yep, there you go. No, I meant darkly if he said I'm sorry and gave up and left to float out in space until he explodes or whatever happened. We had to have known. There would have been some... The system would tell us. It always tells us. Okay. Are there okay. sleeping quarters Great. we can check? I guess. Uh, okay, hang on. Let me see if I can, I can... I can maybe try and pull something up here. Um, do you want to try to see what do you want to pull up on the on the board? Yeah, or I want to get this thing you have, open. You have literally access. I mean, you can turn on some of your power to go and check the systems. That is definitely an option. I want to try and just get this thing open and temporarily get it running enough to check. All right. It's a lot of dice. Ten dice. Ten dice. Yeah. Okay, that's we got a success success and we got one one loss. Not re-rolling that. Yeah. There you go. One one for Bye. me. Two for you. So um, by all means. Tell me kind of how you go through the process of getting the board up and running, basically going from reserve power or emergency power and giving it just enough juice so that you can check the systems. And then I will tell you what you see. Hmm. Okay, so I'm just describing how I get the thing on. Yeah, I just would I would love to hear how you feel like your character. And if this is, by the way, by all means, if it's too technical, since obviously oh, we're no, all no. space astronauts inside of this. <laughs> um, but uh, but I'm giving you narration rights to be able to tell me how you get the power on Okay. for a moment, yes. Okay, <clears throat> so I am one of the few mechanical engineers left on the station right, right. now. Um, one might say the only. Yes, one might say the only. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I, I, I get the panel open. There's an access, uh, an access channel just underneath. Uh, I get it open, and I know that there is a, uh, there's basically a mainline power mm -hmm. uh, grid that runs through the entire station. Right. It accesses through auxiliaries every other system, but okay. I can channel power off of the mainline 
mechanically without having to go through the emergency. You're basically, procedures. just turning the spigot on in an area enough. Yeah, just a so little it's bit. just it's a little bit Legoy. It's just reconnecting the line. It diverts power temporarily without having to reboot the entire system. Great. So you divert enough power that you basically see the regular fluorescent lights of this module click on. In fact, part of the module that you're in, including the, the airlocks that are close to your area, as well as the engines um, that are used to correct orbit, which are right next to you, all kind of boot on for a moment, and you can see systems dialing and rebooting, and you do see the airlock hatch. One is currently red, as if it has cycled. Okay. Um, technically, uh, it, it might not mean anything. It's also, there are errors all the time. Mm -hmm. um, technically, airlock one is registering. It has been recently used. Oh, shit. Um, Poisk. It could be. Poisk. Poisk. Uh, it, it could be, um, it could be from an EVA. Um, it could be from a lot of things. Great. I don't want to jump to conclusions right now. Okay. Um, but Dimitri's not here, so. He's not responding to the comms. At the very least, we need to try and still get this course correction done while we have time. We can look for him later. Yeah. Um, but we don't have a lot else we can do right now. You do see that the notes that Dimitri has left are still on the clipboard that he's left into it. It's a whole lot of advanced astrophysics science. Uh, it's a bunch of gobbledygook for anyone who doesn't understand astrophysics. But there is some numbers on there that could make sense. So who wants to put in the course correction? Uh, I mean, anyone good with this? I was president in mathletes, but I don't feel like this is uh, preparing me <laughs> for this specific challenge. I'm going to be busy just trying to keep power in this module. So Great. someone else has to do all the inputs. Listen, I only have, like, undergrad-level physics. I don't know. Well... I've seen the schematics for it. I, I could try. Okay. Just, yeah, just put in what's on the clipboard. It's not. It shouldn't. Hopefully, be too complex. Okay. I'm gonna try and reroute power while you do that. Uh, I'm gonna take a big deep breath and kind of turn to the side and swallow my spit without anyone watching. Mm -hmm. I kind of. <laughs> Great. And you go up to the dimmed interface panel, and you see the UI laid out before you. <laughs> <laughs> Three ones. Three but ones. Four sixes. But four sixes. I will take those. So. I get one dice to see if I can steal narrative control. Nope, I can't. So. <laughs> okay. Um, but please, why don't you take narration rights in this conflict? So I take the clipboard and I start running my finger down the numbers and I very deliberately make sure I don't make any mistakes because any wrong number can send us spiraling off towards the moon, can use too much fuel, too much boost, and if we go f too far to the left, it's over. Mm -hmm. So I run the entire numbers and luckily there's a safeguard check on the system when nothing will be finally inputted until I hit the button. So I double check everything. Everything looks to be normal mm -hmm. to my knowledge, but I am not a navigational expert, but it looks correct, and I push the button to enter the port. So as you push in the button, you hear the <laughs> of the outside engines. They boost up, and you can feel the vibrations of the module that you're in just rattle ever so minor. It's, it's good, but vibration in jet fuel is jet fuel. And you can feel as kind of the space station starts to make this slow pivot as it's making its course adjustment appropriately. That's a $700 million turn, guys. How much time does that save us? Well. Or how much time does it give us? According to this, we're just back on regular track to continue the orbit around the moon. This just keeps us from careening into, the, into it because it keeps coming closer. Okay, uh, do we know where we are to, to finish the orbit around the moon and get back to the orbit around the Earth part where we're well, with the sun? Well, it, it looks like at least three hours until we get out of this darkness. Okay. What, At least. what Dimitri was working on last um, was stabilizing the orbit so we maintain that new path. Uh, granted, the moon is apparently moving, um, but this should correct us enough that we maintain our sort of cyclical uh, trajectory long enough to figure out how this we can get off the station or we can get help. When three hours comes up, we'll be facing the Earth, and if we have a shot to get back, 
it'll be then. I mean, I, I'm sorry to get dark here, but do we even really want to get back? We've all been seeing where the moon's going. I feel like maybe, maybe the safest answer is should somehow try to get people here. Until what? We have no supplies. How do we, how do we live on this thing? I, I don't know. That's why I, I feel like that's what we need to figure out. I mean, if the, if the moon's going to slam into the earth, that's not a viable option. Standard operating procedure for these types of events is to just follow straight protocol, go with the navigational systems, and continue the mission until we figure out an alternative. The way these things usually work, um, one of the other, uh, Leslie was telling me about this, but the orbit is anomalous, obviously. The moon moving toward Earth is bizarre and crazy, but these things, because of the massive size of these bodies, tend to self-correct. It's much less likely the moon will actually collide with the Earth than mm -hmm. it will simply find some new oblong path okay. as it eventually reaches an equilibrium. Our best chance of survival is getting back to Earth, and there's a, a perfectly good chance everyone on Earth will survive pending whatever else might be going on down there. Um, I've been hearing some weird shit on the comms, but um, th if we stay here, we're going to die. It's a guarantee. We have to try and get off the station. Now you mentioned the Leslie. So what role does Leslie serve on the station? Leslie uh, is uh, the captain of the ISS huh. for the American team. Got it, the captain of the American team. Okay. All right. Uh, great. So, um, and you know, that is something that Leslie has absolutely told you. I mean, it is Leslie's job to make sure that no one makes any rash discussions at this point, but even uh, Leslie has mentioned that at that point, the oblong orbit of the moon at this stage will definitely wreak havoc upon Earth for sure, you know, going crazy with tidal floods and maybe even causing some unnecessary earthquakes that have been dormant from so long because the Earth's magnetic field is off. But um, that is their professional opinion that everything should settle in at some point. So uh, it's better than staying here. Well, is there it? were four billion people in Earth, and there were 40 in space. So I think our chances down there are a little bit better. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, next order of business, I suppose, would then be to see what we can do about this uh, module you came in on to see if it's even viable to try and take that off the station. All right. So um, let's say for the purposes of this that that module has that I brought you in has been originally offloaded and garnished for supplies, but there is definitely a chance because of trying not to use all of the power, there is a chance that there could be more stuff inside of it because you've been you've ostensibly kept it on lockdown this entire time. So um, if you want to go investigate to see if there might be some extra supplies inside of there, that would be great. I just want to know who is going to cycle the airlock to go inside. Uh, my uh, I, um, yeah. Genevieve? Yeah. Honestly, she's been on like twice as many EVAs as I have, so. So it's time to get an EVA suit. <sighs> yep. And it's time to go into the module. All right. <clears throat> are you going out through Piosk or are you going out through a different? Because um, the, the Piosk yeah. airlock um, and Prius, that is one of the areas where you can do docks. It's, it's Rasvit and. Um, Pyrrhus, who are the areas where supplies come in at. So there's basically two different areas that you could have supplies come into that you could EVA out of to go to the module. So, ooh, in fact, let's make it this. The reason you have to EVA out is because at some point there was an emergency system and it, and it just poof, it just disconnected and it's been managed to staying with you, but it's just kind of ever so, it's maintaining orbit with you, but it's away. So you gotta pull the module in. I like that better. Okay. Yeah. Cool. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> you, but you can't drag it in. You have to just go into it. Okay. You know, so you can carry what you can carry. Okay, so I, I'm putting on the suit. Yeah. And then having to go out there. Yeah. And then Spaceball. carry things back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, let's um, do that. Then, does it matter which one we go out through anymore? It doesn't or? matter. Okay. No, an airlock's an airlock for the purposes of our story. Okay. I'm sure the people who uh, are ISS nerds will yell at me. ISS and then. One, one for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
So that was uh, do I have enough juice in my camera battery to film this? You tell me. Uh, I, I, I don't know, honestly, but I'm, I'm going to hit it a couple times because, you know, that's how you get things to turn on. And uh, I wasn't supposed to be the cameraman, but that's fine. And uh, turn turn on my camera and uh, and just kind of watch as best I can what's I'm gonna going to say, on right uh, now. If you notice, she's highly trained in the spacewalk apparatus with the EVA suit. It was provided by our stockholders, and it's made at oh, Michigan-related factories. It looks really good, and these are the kind of exciting things you can do aboard the ISS. Now, before I go out, yeah. do I do I know how much time I have to go in and out? To go in and out. So you you definitely with the uh, air supply that you have on this multi-layered EVA suit, um, you see this is where I have this is where I have to get reality checked a little bit. So I'm going to be very general and say that you are in the uh, you're more in the half an hour, hour category okay. than you are in then like the minutes, minutes. category. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because no proper EVA can be done in minutes. It probably, I've, I've heard that there are spacewalks that can take up to a full hour. So we're going to work off of those assumptions since we're all just playing astronaut for the day. Okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, all right. I'm, I'm, I'm testing my communication yeah, system. I'm going to have comms open. I hear you. You're coming through fine. Um, just take your time. Okay. And are you going out the same airlock that find. was... The one thing I think it is important, are you going out the same airlock that was that was mentioned that had the red, uh, the red alert on it? Or are you going out the other one? I would say the other one. <laughs> Good idea. Red alerts are... <laughs> so you cycle out, and please narrate to me um, how you accomplish this spacewalk to get to the module effectively. Uh... So there's really like I'm just walking along the outside of a of the module itself. Yes. So I'm not like out just like using a little. Tss, tss. You tell me because it's this is part of your story as well yeah. too. So whatever I've given, feel free to elaborate, expand upon, or well, not disregard. So you're taking over story. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm just going to try to run over as fast as I can. Yeah. Like just using your personal momentum yes. as you're walking with the magnetic boots. Yes. Okay. While keeping communications. I don't know, I've never done this before. You have to walk me through this. Okay, no, you're doing fine. Um, just remember, I know it's been a while, remember the training. Um, okay. You're, you're closing in now. Uh -huh. uh, you're gonna wanna reach out and grab. I see it. Yes, grab the hatch there. Uh-huh. Okay, good. Now, if you can work the door, there's gonna be a release of air when you open it because it's detached, but hold on and then you can just pull yourself inside. Okay, okay. Well, as you open and you cycle through this detached module, you go into it, you do see something out of the corner of your eye. It seems to be something, a shape, a shadow, that's kind of, um, it is pitch black, but you do have the starlight and the little bits of the moonlight that is giving you a little bit of um, illumination in the void of space that you are in. But something is reflecting light. What the fuck is that? Everything, everything okay? I, 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 think so. I think so. No, I, I don't know. I, it just must be something I, I saw. I don't know. It's nothing. It's nothing. It's fine. Jen, you sure? I, it's just something caught my eye. I don't, I'm don't. i not sure what it is. Turn the camera over here. Magnetic boots brought to you by Myers Industry are the finest in the industry, and they can always be counted on, even in outer space. See, I told you. So you uh, okay, let's keep it going. So you, um, you get inside of the hatch, mm -hmm. and you do see that um, while you had an opportunity to unload some supplies when the module first was docked into it and brought into the station, um, that it detached during the whole incident, we'll say, and since then you've not been bothering to want to do this up to this point. So you do go in there and you do see that there's about, you know, I'd still less than a quarter of the original supplies that are still in there, but you you get to, you get to carry what you carry. So what do you focus on? Uh, food and water. Great. You grab as much food and water as you could physically hold onto and you walk back into the module, you cycle through, and you pull yourself up into the EVA suit, and you're back now inside of the, uh, the uh, inside of the airlock module. Wow, what a heroic moment, Genevieve! Tell us what that was like. Uh, um, what? I'm I'm sorry. I I don't I'm I don't, I don't like being on camera. Um, it was it was 
<laughs> things are there was supplies in there yeah guys bigger problems right now i, I, I know yeah really you, we don't you, have not, we don't have time you for this. are the hero and again we have another adventure here on the international space station casted crew is always on top of board and make sure they get the job done folks i can't fucking believe this Why are we letting civs on here again i don't okay. it's really good okay. um what, what do you got um i just brought some back some food and water i don't know what technical equipment we might need or they might have so I don't know if we need to go back out there, but for now, at least we have food and water. Now, I really should have asked while you were out there. I'm Okay, um, when you were in the module, uh, uh, if you were paying attention, there would have been a panel to your right. Um, even in low power uh, states, it will give you a readout of the current status of the ship insofar as the onboard batteries go. Do you know if it read green? It would be just letters in, in green. Were you able to see that? Why don't you roll to see if you're observant enough? This is a conflict <laughs> that could be both and bad. <clears throat> so I'm all for it. Conflict. Got to do the conflict shake. Uh, all right. Two well, for me. I will for uh, use this opportunity to also take narrative rights, or try to roll for narrative rights, and I actually have a lot of dice in this circumstance because you're at four right now, so I get six. Let's see if I get Ooh. more than two sixes. Which I do not, I get one six. Okay. So it is still up to you, Genevieve. <clears throat> Tell the story. I saw that there was a green light, but something's odd. There was only half of the supplies that were in there. I, I mean, we might have inventoried wrong when you guys first docked, I don't know. Uh, uh, the manifest is usually uh, usually correct, but I'm yes, sure absolutely, there could have been a few. I mean. Is it possible that our missing navigator may have absconded with some supplies? I did see something. I mean, yeah, what was it's silly. I don't that? know. It, I don't know. It's. I just saw a, like a thing, and it just caught my eye for just like a second. But come on. Okay, it's all. This has been a rough couple of weeks. Space debris. Uh, yeah, it's it's getting to our head a little bit. It's it's. This is not abnormal. We've trained for this. It's okay. Sure. sure. Let's. The module has power. That's what matters. Yes. Um, which means we could use it to try and get off the station, but we would need an incoming return trajectory, typically supplied planet side, and we'd obviously need to be able to get in there and start it. That usually requires it being attached to the ISS. There are ways to make that work, but not with what we currently have with us. Okay, mm. so what are the next steps? <clears throat> so, uh, to be something to kind of keep into it, because I do see more stuff, there is a there's an opportunity here to maybe reattach the module. They, you do have a remote manipulation arm that's on the station. And it's usually used for very minute techniques, but for the purposes of our story, we could use it in order to basically um, either attach or reattach the module, or at least get it to a situation where it's easier to get to and from it mm. to resupply. That being said, the remote arm uses power. We do have the remote arm um, that assists with EVAs and docking. We could use that to reattach the module or just try and guide it back and then attach it manually. But it's, it's power hungry, and that means it would need to te temporarily divert power from the only other system we have running right now, which is life support. And more importantly, do you want to sit and enjoy this food that you just found as well, too? So, more water, whatever it is. How long do you think we'd have to be without life support? I mean, is it sustainable? I mean, it wouldn't. It wouldn't negate life support. It, it wouldn't. We wouldn't necessarily run out of air or water cycling. But what it means is that it's going to operate in a low power state for the time it takes, maybe five to ten minutes tops, hopefully. If we only won run one carbon dioxide filter instead of the normal two, the air will become lighter, we may become lightheaded, but we could turn it back on after, and that's the most minimal drain on the power. Right, the only- As long as we all do it before we pass out. Yes, the only difficulty being the fact that we now don't have sun access. The solar panels can't recharge while we're on this side of the moon. Got it. So if we drain it too much, the life support will not last until we come around the other side of the moon. It's, it's, it's mathy. But this might, be our, could work. this might be our only shot to bring that back, though. And it, it, it almost definitely is our only shot, I think. So at this point, then, if the plan is to use the remote manipulation arm in order to get closer into it, um, this circumstance uh, uh, 
I guess, who would like to remote pilot the arm? Well, I'd like to take a second, actually. We did find food and yeah. water. Um, I'd like to enjoy some of this for a moment. <laughs> um, and then before we actually try and reattach the module, I'd like to, to take a tally of who is still on this ship. Oh, yes. Um, I, I, we, something happened to Dimitri, whatever that was, um, and we haven't heard from anyone else. Leslie's been sleeping. Today. So I'd like to make sure everyone else is still okay and they're on board with this plan. Okay, do you want me to go around and take inventory? I mean, I could just kind of pose as if I'm getting statements from everyone yeah, you, uh, about their could. life so we don't freak anyone out. Yeah, uh, if you can check crew quarters and, yeah. and the galley just to make sure everyone is there and accounted for and also knows that we're going to be trying to get the module running. Okay, got it. Uh, so I'm going to start going around through mm -hmm. the ship as I've known it in the uh, approximately four to five weeks that I've been here. Um, right. And just let everyone know that uh, for our comprehensive reports that we are taking back to Earth, I would like a statement from them as to what their daily life on the International Space Station is like. Right. So um, I'm going to say that beyond Dimitri and Leslie... There is one other person on the space station with you, and that is it. And everyone else has succumbed or fallen in one form or another in various different ways. Yes. Because, I mean, we're presuming at this point that one, two, three, four, five, six, we're making a lot of assumptions here at this point, but yes. I'm going to say the only, there's only one other person alive who's left on the station right now, presumably alive. And who is that? Uh, the person left on the space station is... Besides Dimitri and Leslie. Besides Dimitri and Leslie is Annabelle. Um, Annabelle. Yeah. And what is Annabelle doing on the station? Annabelle is uh, pretty far down on, on the... The comms team. Um, so she's on the comms team, but she's a more so she's more engineers. entry level, uh, as far as entry level gets to ISS. So she's one of the best at what she does, but she's not high up the food chain. So I'm going to say that you have not spoken to Annabelle in a while, and it's because her outlook on this situation has taken her down a downward spiral so intense and so incredibly debilitating that you've actually had to sedate her a few times. Oh, Jesus. Because it has been so tough. Violent outburst, yelling, screaming. And she was not at all claustrophobic in any of the tests leading up into this. She was a very reasonable, grounded engineer. But as soon as the prospect of not coming back to Earth was potentially a reality for her. It was like a switch just clicked on and suddenly she wasn't Annabelle anymore. Mm. Some wild, feral thing that just wanted to get out of its cage. So with that said, are you going to go check on her? Yeah. Yeah, and, and so as far mm -hmm. as everybody else that's disappeared from the space station in one way or another, as you said, Am I uh, potentially going around room to room and kind of finding bodies? Or are they just not there? Do you want to put it down to a conflict roll to see what we find? <laughs> it's so dark. <laughs> well, I mean, how, how else are people just disappearing from the space station? No, no, I agree. And I'm actually just I'm trying like, to decide. <laughs> I'm just trying to decide how much, how much I want to take control of this and how much I want to leave to this to a conflict roll. Yes, I know what's going to happen, with or without the success. Uh, okay, one, we didn't lose any dice, and we have one success. <clears throat> um, actually, this is this is your territory. This is one hundred percent your territory, Stacy. So you get to tell me exactly how this goes down, and I am more than happy to help you in this circumstance, but let me know, tell me who was left. And you have some assumptions about what happened to Dimitri. So was it a joined effort or did he make a decision on his own? 
Uh, well, I start going around from uh, from door to door and, you know, sleeping quarters and offices because I don't know if people are choosing to work or choosing to, uh, in this time, spend time in their rooms and uh, knocking on doors. I'm not hearing a response. Uh, so the first time I knock on a door and don't hear any response, I let it be. I figure they're sleeping. I move to the next one. Knock on the door. Don't get any response. Try to knock again on the same door. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me, hi. I'm here reporting for the International Space Station and I need a statement from you. Are you available? Okay, well, uh, uh, we'll, we'll be in the comms office if you change your mind. Move on to the third room. Knock on the door. Uh, hello? Hi, this is Stacy Martell reporting for the International Space Station. Are you available to make a comment? Go away. Hello? Why are you... Um, if you could just let me in for one second, I would, I'll be very quick and not interrupt you at all, but I would also love to fill you in on some of the goings-on here at the space station. No. No. The answer is no. I'm not letting you in. I'm not letting you talk to me. Just go find your own room. Uh, do you need a shipment of resources, perhaps? What are you, a fucking robot? Shipment of resources? No, no, I'm fine. Do I know if this is Annabelle's room? I don't know, is it Annabelle's room? I'm I'm not trying to pass it on to you. This is your success. This sure, is this sure, is your sure, sure. narrative rights. Um uh, is that you, Annabelle? I I wasn't sure if this was your room. I'm going around room to room, but Honestly, I'm here to help, and you may have noticed that it's been very dark here lately. Yeah, yeah, no, it's been dark. The world is dark. Everything is dark. And yes, I'm fine. I just don't want you to come in right now. Okay, okay, then I won't come in. Thank you. At all. Um, if there were a way to find some light, but it would require your help, would you be interested? It, the pause is enough to maybe be a shrug, mm -hmm. maybe. Okay. We're working on something really promising right now. Okay. And if we, if we need your help, would it be all right if we come back? We can talk through the door if you're more comfortable that way. Um. <laughs> sure, just, I don't know. Just whatever you want to do, go for it. Okay. Keep up hope. We've got this. Stacy, um, whoever you've got, bring them back to the airlock right now. We, we have something going on out here. We need you here. Okay. Um, I'm going to really quickly just run through the rest of the rooms and knock hello, knock hello, and just mark down yeah. Yeah. who's not there. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I feel like I do... Uh, get one of the rooms, the door is open, yeah. and uh, I find absolutely no one in there at all. No one in there at all. Mm -hmm. It's Leslie's room. Okay. And they're not in their office at the moment. It could be somewhere else in the station, but at least all the sleeping areas that you've checked. Um, you've heard from Annabelle. Okay. And that's about what you know. Uh, so then I'm going to circle back to uh, Annabelle's room. <coughs> and uh, If the offer for help is still available, we could use you now. God, jeez, that was fucking quick. Sorry. Um, all right, yeah, just let me get dressed. I'll sure. be out in a second. Sure, no worries. Uh, on the come. Uh, be there in a second, bringing Annabelle. No one else is here. No one? Okay, whatever, just brief us when you're back. Got it. So you, Stacy, come back, um, unless you want to wait for Annabelle to come into it. I'm going to so. wait for Annabelle. Okay. Yeah. It takes a few minutes, longer than it should to get dressed, but you kind of watch as Annabelle... She has like shoulder length, dirty blonde hair, and she has just bags under her eyes. Like she's been crying for God knows how long. Get it. And she kind of pulls up her flight suit over this just, um, you know, dark tank top that she's wearing. And she zips up and goes, okay, let's go. For the record, uh, let's just leave most of that questioning footage of the B-roll on, you know, oh. put on the cutting room floor. 100%. Like, absolutely, yeah. Uh, you, it's just, it's just Annie? 
Where is everyone else? Uh, didn't answer their doors. Danny, didn't... they're gone. All of them. Wait, what do you mean gone? I'm sorry, gone? Why would they stay? Why Where would they go? <laughs> this girl's been highly sedated. Maybe she's a little bit loopy from the, the, spa the travel, but... No, no, it's a good story. I mean, what, you just want to stay here? I heard you talking for a while ago, and you're right. Why go down? Why even... Why even bother at this point? Hey, we want to go too, but we want to fucking live! Right. Yeah. Good for you, Danny. I'm glad you've got this gumption to turn this tin can into your salvation. Okay. okay. Maybe it's time I go get some more sedatives. Annabelle, you might not be feeling as good as yeah, you thought. Don't fucking touch me, Joseph. She's fine. She's fine. Just don't okay. get I mean, anywhere close. I Annabelle. watched I watched Leslie go to bed last night. I saw her get in her her cabin. Where is she? Not in her cabin. I w that was the one door that I did open. I, I was she, terrified I would find a corpse. She was trying to go do something in the hydroponics lab last I heard from her, for whatever it's worth. Close to your lab, Genevieve. It's, hey, I don't know. Hey, that's worth a lot. Yeah, yeah, well. Thank you. What did you need from me? I mean, okay. you said you needed my help for something. Yes, we're trying to get the command, the, the module they came in on reattached to the space station so we can try and jettison off this thing. Right. Get it, back to planet side. Yeah, it, it, it dislodged in the thing. Sure. Yes. You are the robotics ex expert here, so I need a little bit of assistance. I can jerry-rig the thing to work, but I'm not great at controlling it. I just need a bit of help. It's going to take power. We can give it power temporarily. I did. I crunched the numbers. We can spare maybe 10 minutes without draining life support before we hit the sun again. All right, well, I mean. However, I don't, I know how this sounds. Um, I was looking over the schematics and trying to compare them to make sure the module was in the right orientation to reattach to the station. And, uh, I did, it, it could be anything, I saw something out there and it looked like what you said you Floating saw. space debris it was, probably it, could. It, it might be, it, it, it might be. Humanoid or mechanical? Look, I could, I, I'm not trying to, to cause a thing, but I, I could have sworn it was moving. It's. Do you want me to bring it in too with the arm, Danny? I'd, I'd rather not <laughs> do that. But it, last I saw, it went around the other side of the module. What? It, it could have. Oh, all I know is that space debris doesn't change your trajectory while it's floating around. Okay. All right. Well, whatever it is, there's not much we can do about it. So if you just want me to pull in the module closer so you can resupply easier, I'll do that. Yes. Let's let's just re reconnect the module, but. We lock down the airlock until everything is secured, and we know for sure. So this is the point where I'm going to have you do the conflict role. I think in this circumstance, since you're manipulating the power, let's just see how the whole uh, ordeal goes, because I'm not going to roll for, um, for Annabelle at the moment. This is a conflict, and I, you took the lead on it. So I'll take the 1-1, one, one, but you can have the 1-6. Oh, my God. Um, uh, if you... If you saw something, and I saw something, we are potentially pulling that something in towards us. Are it you is, sure you want to do this? It's a risk right now that we have to take. We can lock the air down, the airlock down from the inside, so it's inaccessible from the exterior. The function exists. We're, we're not supposed to activate it because if someone's on an EVA, they get shut out. But we can do that. So let's go into this, um, because. I personally feel like that this whole process will probably exist. You did get a success onto it. So using Annabelle, you're able to reroute the power to get into the actual module, and she does use the robotic arm. It comes to life. You can hear as it slowly starts to manipulate and move its way down. The module, which is still just slightly spinning, but still staying adjacent to where it is, you look through the security cameras as she's using to remote manipulate this arm. She grabs a hold of the module and slowly starts to guide it 
ever so slowly back to where it is. And as you are getting it close to the airlock, um, you know, it's taking time, but Annabelle seems to be savoring every single moment, guiding it and moving it back in. Annabelle, come on. It's this delicate work. Just let me do it. You're doing a great job. And she puts the module back into place, using almost up the entire 10 minutes to get it into place. And at that point, the cameras have pivoted enough and you have moved into the light enough that you can see the thing that is floating into the breeze. And it is an EVA suit that is just dangling by a single cord that seems to be outside of the airlock that you did not go out of. It's much more distinct using the camera's robot arm. Uh, D Dimitri? Yeah, probably. Turn the camera off. I don't know why he'd take a fucking EVA. Okay, whatever. Okay, I'm gonna, hold on. Leave him there? I'm gonna reroute power back to life support now that it's attached. It does. You probably have a 30 second buffer rather than a 10 minute buffer now. Okay, so with the trajectory that we put the ISS on, mm -hmm. we should have just enough life support to get us into sunlight again so we can recharge the batteries. And we have the module attached now. Can I go now? Yes, you can just be, there's something going on here, just be careful, okay? Yeah. Stay in your bunk if you could, or stay with us. But let's not get too adventurous I'm, on the station. I know this is a difficult time, but we're here for each other, we're all we have. Well, I appreciate that, Genevieve, but I don't really think that's going to matter in the end. So good luck with your module. I hope whatever is in there gives you something to hold on to. Until then, I'll just, I'll be where I'll be. Thank you. If you see Leslie, can you let her know to come find us yeah. or, or hit the comms or something? Yeah, I'll, uh, if I see Leslie, I'll let you know. Okay, thanks. And Annabelle, just as calmly as if it was four weeks ago when nothing was wrong, just makes her spacewalk back into her room. Um, hey, it, we got the job done, okay? Yeah. Hey, if we see anything, get the camera rolling. Okay, yeah. Okay, this, this whole plan about getting off the station when we reach Earth orbit again. It really depends on Leslie being here. I assume she'd still be in her bunk, but we still need her in the module. Uh, what, what, some, Annabelle said hydroponics, Hydro right? Hydroponics, yeah. yeah. If she's in there, we need to go find her. I don't know why she's wandering around the station, but we gotta track her down. Okay. Are we gonna do anything about Dimitri's suicide mission? If, if he's wandering out there for as long as I think he has. It's done. I, I'm fairly certain he chose to be out there. Okay. It's not just, we're not gonna call it a suicide mission, we'll call it sacrificed during the operation, technical failure in the suit. Sure, sure, People yeah. People really? will know what happened here. I got shareholders to report to, okay? So when we mm -hmm. make it back down there, if you ever want to have any more supplies put up here, you're gonna follow the protocol and the SOP. You really think that this mission's really going to survive now. this? I don't have time for this. Or if we can get some kind of message to them down there, maybe they can send us more supplies if, if the, the plan A doesn't work. You know, there's always a plan B. And That's exactly and plan right. Plan C, well, we're gonna be okay. So um, does this mean, Joseph, that you're gonna be the one to go find Leslie in the hydroponics, or are you going to leave that to um, the engineers and the scientists? I will go find Leslie in the hydroponics. I'll go find her, okay? Since you guys wanna sit here and figure out our next move, we have to save energy, and we can't all move because there's not enough oxygen. Only one of us needs to take it up, or more carbon dioxide will hit the atmosphere, and we'll all be passed out and not going anywhere. Good call. Be my guest. So you um basically move to where uh, some of the other laboratories are. There's the European laboratories that are on the other side of the station. So you basically do the clunk, move, clunk, as you grab a hold of each one of the sides and make this maneuvers getting to the other area where do you know that the hydroponics and Genevieve's lab with all the microorganisms are currently at. And you get closer into the lab and you can see that uh, 
Leslie is in there, and they seem to be hunched over something at the moment. They are, are currently look like they're they're deep into um, an observation of some time as you kind of get closer to where Leslie is. So, but you I mean at this point you probably even have a another full call it fifteen feet. And I'm looking through a window. No, you're looking through the doorway. Through the doorway. Yeah. Okay. Is it as a closed can... doorway? With the... no, most of them are Portal. open. Okay. The, most of the portals are open, unless there's some kind of catastrophic failure. I'm going to say most of the portals are open in okay. the circumstances. So, uh, Leslie, hi. <laughs> <gasps> Leslie, uh, my name's Joseph Myers. I know. You look up and you look as Leslie turns around and you see there's blood covering her mouth at the moment and she seems to have the corpse of one of your specimen rats in her hand at the moment and there's a chunk that's been pulled out of it at the moment. Uh, uh, Leslie, I'm gonna grab the portal door to the hydroponics and, and, and slam it shut immediately. Okay. You slam it shut. Let's see if you do it in time. <laughs> no three sixes. Three way. sixes. <laughs> Joseph is the man. Uh, so <sighs> Joseph, as you uh, grab, please. I mean, I, I mean, I guess at this point, I have a whole bunch of dice that I so can potentially due roll. Due to the zero gravity, and she's chewing, and no, no, I'm, there's no way I okay. got to go. Due yeah. to the zero gravity, as she's chewing through the rat, these coagulated red bubbles are kind of floating through the air, and it kind of it's weird because it looks like it's in slow motion, and her eyes are bloodshot with purple creases running through the white of her eyes. Mm -hmm. As I slam the door, she presses her face up right up against the glass yeah. and vomits against it. Oh, just, and it just oh. lifts up and you can see the mixture of the mucus as well as the, the disheveled rat corpse is just kind of laid out and the the she doesn't slam it very hard but she throws her body against it for a moment before she pushes away and just kind of goes as you watch her through the portal, through the smears of the yellow and red, just gore that's there, and kind of goes back to the cages again. Uh, I, uh, I kind of look down for a second, and I check, and I look down the hallways, and I see them all not paying attention, and uh, there's a couple emergency systems mm -hmm. that can burn out anything in the room. Oh, like a... Contamination like failsafe. Contamination failsafe. And uh, since no one's looking, I put my hand on it. Well, that's going to involve you rerouting that power. And definitely, since you are not the engineer of this, I'm going to have to ask for a conflict roll on that as well, too. I didn't touch it. I just put my hand on oh, it. Oh, on it. I just put my hand on it. I didn't, didn't oh. use it. I just put my hand on it. Oh, okay. So I haven't made the decision yet, but I'm contemplating. Will you let me know? If you choose to hit that or not. So cool, 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 cool. All right. Um, I think at this point, Genevieve, Danny, Stacy. Everything okay with you guys down there? Everything okay? Yeah. Yeah. Have you found her yet? Uh, working on it right now. Just uh, some with the door. Okay. You're... Hurry up, please. This place isn't a mansion. You sound weird. You don't sound like you're trying to sell me something. Uh, it's well. the oxygen. <clears throat> I think it's starting to kick in. He just is weird. Uh, Slow breaths, you got this. Th thanks, Stacy. Genevieve, it is your lab that he's yeah, next I, to close to. I'm, I'm going to go down there to check it. All right. So, Joseph, as you're sitting looking at this, knowing that you're going to have to reroute the power before you hit this button, which should, I mean, it is the proverbial red button. Um, uh, it's not... And by the way, I should, for the record, say it's not one of those we're going to cleanse the room. It's a detach module. Oh, Airlock, oh. and then just jettison it out kind of a situation. Um, but you hear the boom, boom, boom of clearly the rungs as Genevieve is making her uh, strong velocity. Um, and you can hear her more than really see her as she's coming up behind you at the moment. Do we hear the thudding as well? The thudding? Yeah, I've heard not from before. this far away okay. at this stage. So, uh, uh, Doctor Genevieve, um, yeah, you come across into it. 
The what door. the fuck is happening? The door, um... What is on the, what is on the door? Look, I don't know what's happening in there, but we can't tell anyone what's going on right now. What? And what I'm do you mean, gonna what's kind going of like, on? Move my hand. I kind of move, yeah. move yeah. out of my way to yeah. check out what's happening. Uh, the, I will tell you that the first thing you see is the gore, the red blood, and the vomit that's all across the window at the moment. I think. I think she's gone. I think she's. I know. I think she's gone. We can get rid of her. We can pull the button. We can. I don't know if we have the power. I don't know if we should. What, what happened to her? I don't know. I don't know. I was. I went to the door. And Did you see her? Did you say anything? I said said her name, and she she was eating a rat, and she vomited on the window, and she's convulsing and floating through the air. I don't think it's a good idea. We open the door right now, Doctor. I, I don't think it's a good idea. I think at this point, raised voices. Yes. So. Yeah, so I'm gonna also converge on the yeah, yeah, we altercation. Kept running. Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> What's going on? Uh, you know, uh, as, as you can see, probably. The fuck. It, I'm also gonna go to the window and see what I can see through it in the door. I mean, you peer through it, but the uh, it has coagulated and, and it's run, it's made its smear at this point. You have an opaque window at this stage, opaque with blood. Is that Leslie? I, I, I think it's uh, what's left of. What did you fucking do? I didn't do anything, okay? I came over here and she was floating in the air, twitching and vomiting and eating part of the animals. So you special. locked her? That, that's a medical emergency. If I didn't emergency. lock her in there, she's out here with us, okay? Fuck, Jesus, come on. I'm going to open the door. All right, As give me those dice. That, I'm running to the lab. All right, to the other to, end. To mine, to mine. It's in the same. Oh, you're gonna go into the lab with Leslie? Oh, it's the same it's lab? It's the same module. I'm opening it up. Oh. Both doing it. I am right. hiding behind Actually, we haven't, seen, we haven't seen a role <laughs> yeah. from Genevieve in a bit, so if, if that was your choice, because it's your lab and your wow. If you two do this, Too you're successes. in full control. Oh man, okay, look, that's another day, uh -uh. Of, another day of sixes. Um, Tell me, tell me what happens. Uh, I unlock the door and I'm like trying not to slip over vomit yeah. and like covering just. Yeah. It's it's less slipping and the more the fact that it's, it's just. Oh, that's right, that's right, gravity. Because the gravity, uh, you're avoiding it. And the smell, oh God, the smell. Oh, yeah. fuck. And you do hear oh. the sound of eating as just, it's just something. Close the door, doctor. Why do we open I go. Close the door, door doctor. Check my. I just want to grab my all your specimens, all my specimens, and my yeah. my journals, and everything. You can definitely see as you're going and running for the specimens and getting and getting what you can and trying to grab your organisms. Um, you can see that clearly some of it has been smashed, broken. Um, you do find your notes, your laptop, especially the one that's there. And as you get close to it, because of the proximity of these labs all next to each other, it's only like a station away from where Leslie is after having finished another one, has now just taken it and you can see this one is still alive and it's squeaking. As she kind of just like looks at it, not looking at it, but like past it and has her head over it and you see that as she just, just just pulls and you watch as bit, bits of skin and tissue pull away as you can hear the crunch of bone and she kind of just looks at you and, go, and she starts to speak. But it is not a language you know. And it is not a language you've ever heard. Close the door, doctor. And you grab your stuff and she lunges for you. Oh, God. <sighs> doctor, running, look out. Running out. No ones, no sixes. This scene ends. She lunges for you, and she grasps just enough of your coat to pull you and prevent you from making a quick escape to the door. Nine candles, nine truths. Good news, you have nine dice again. We need to speak some truths about the story. The first is the world is dark. That is for certain. Genevieve, since your conflict role was the one that failed, you get to speak the first truth. I made it out the door. You made it out the door. We're going clockwise, so Joseph, you are next. I... 
I slammed. I grabbed the door and tried to close it behind her. You tried to close it behind her? Yes. Great. Tried. Stacy. I maneuvered myself around Joseph and uh, was able to close the door the rest of the way that he wasn't able to close it. You finished closing I the finished door. I finished closing the door. And then her fingertips were in the crease. Oh, your truth's already gone, though. But that's that was, great. That we can get into it. Like, <laughs> um, you dropped some of your organisms in the process of getting out through the door. Upon the door closing, Leslie disappeared from view into an adjacent lab. Hmm. Leslie went to a causeway. Okay. Hmm. Great. Oh, do we keep going? Yes. Um, You're number six now. There's a noise coming from down the hall. Okay. Seven. Um, I noticed that the other door to the causeway where Leslie was headed is open. We can't explain it, but all of us feel strangely drawn to the noises coming out of that room. The sound? Oh, it's better. I like what you're doing with the sound. The moon is starting to crack. We pick up our story just as quickly as it ended, as you are outside of the laboratory module door, having just slammed it in Leslie's face. But in the map in your mind, you do know that there is another way around. There is another way out of this laboratory. And it's Joseph, you know that door is open. Danny, we gotta get the door closed over there. Okay, I, yeah, let, let, uh, we, we, can, we can probably beat her there. Hang on, let's, let's go. I wanna move through the station. Okay, move through the station. Go as quick as you can. Try not to hit your head on anything. Frantic spacewalks. Okay, good. One for me, the rest for you. Uh, okay, so. <clears throat> I uh, hurriedly, frantically move through the uh, crawlways, the walkways of the station, grabbing and pulling myself. You I've done this a momentum. thousand times before, yes. yes. Redirect momentum to get to that other door where she might be uh, coming through. And I arrive there, yeah. grab the door ready to close it, knowing that she should have gotten to this point at exactly the same time I did her just before. Yeah. As I'm closing it, I realize she's not here. She's not here. Got I don't it. see her in the labs at all. Got it. I still close the door, Yeah, but I don't know where she is. All right, there we go. And then you report back to the group. I, I got the door shut, but... Uh, Lock it, Danny. You know, it's, it's, all, it's all locked down, but she wasn't... She wasn't what? In, in, she's not in the labs. She's not in the fucking lab, Danny? It's impossible that she got there before I did. Okay. It's uh, double the length through the labs. Okay, well, uh, she obviously was uh, influenced by something. Maybe she's moving slower? Okay, that's the other well, thing that I wanted. We, we heard her. Didn't we? I don't know what that was. Down the hall? Yeah. Yeah, I thought I Wait, heard it did, too. Wait, did we all hear that? I thought it was just me. At that point, you can actually feel more than hear. You can s just feel the shock wave just... <laughs> that kind of like rustles and moves and just vibrates the space station in a way that when uh, a um, when an airplane gets turbulence, when it hits some choppy air and it just shakes it ever so lightly as you come into it and you peer out through a portal hole and you can see a crack, an apocalyptic crack as the moon is just, just cracked like an egg as it spider webs across its southern hemisphere. What the fuck? Okay, okay, uh, problem solved. Are we still thinking it will have an, uh, an orbital route? The moon is breaking. Around the Earth? Th that would mess all that up, the right? The moon is breaking. <laughs> what is happening? It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. We, we, have, we still have no choice. 
I, I don't know what to do about this right now, but we still Leslie have to- Leslie was eating rats! I am aware. Tink, 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 tink. Start hearing debris from the moon. Small pieces of sand start to small, little tiny clicks, just tiny pebbles that just seem to be okay. cascading against the side of the ship. This station is designed to withstand space debris moving at over a thousand miles an hour. As long as we don't collide into the main body of the moon, we will be okay. The trajectory is set. The orbit will hold. The moon's gravity is still there. Mm -hmm. We're going to be okay until we get Earth side. Okay. Once Earth. we're facing okay. the Earth, okay. we can try and get down there. I mean, will the Earth be okay? If it's not, there's nothing we can do. We can't just <laughs> duct tape the moon back together. <laughs> so we, I, You're right, you're right, we can't. Okay, it's, it's okay, <sighs> it's fine. But, the, uh, Leslie, um, I wanted to mention, this is not actually the first time that I've seen that. Uh, Wait, people eating rats? It was... It was what? We had another guy uh, once earlier. Um, it, we called it just like a psychotic break. We we assumed that he just went stir crazy. I don't know, cabin fever. Or You're something. talking about Derek Marcus. But yes, how do you know about that? Because I'm part of this company, and Derek Marcus was sent back to Earth for a reason. We were told he was sick. We weren't told he was eating rats and vomiting blood. We thought the symptoms could manifest any number of ways. Weird things can happen up here. It's desolate. It's isolated. But Leslie is now doing. The same thing, and the things that she was saying, that that, that fucking gobbledygook she was saying, Derek was talking the same way. And he was sent to Earth? <laughs> Do you know what happened to Derek Marcus when you sent him back? Derek Marcus laid in the lab for two weeks until his body disintegrated. Jesus. How do you put a spin on that? Okay, maybe it's maybe maybe it's viral. Maybe there's a, 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 a some kind of pathogen on the station. We have to quarantine Annabelle. And we do. Oh my God, fucking Annabelle. We do. Wait, do, do you think she may already be contaminated? She acted pretty fucking weird to me. Yeah, but like not eating rats weird. Not yet. If there's a chance. I don't want to take that chance. Uh, well, to be fair, she is kind of self quarantining at the moment. I don't think if we ask her to come out of her cabin that she will. Small little droplet of blood floats by us all, and I kind of like move my head. Don't touch the blood. Don't touch anything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, actually, I would probably go so far as to say that, um, you know, the small droplet of blood, they're micro, they're tiny, they're like beads, and you're not too sure where and how and when they came from. They are out here at the moment, though. Shit, 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 shit. Okay, we need to, let's just get to. Annabelle, make sure she's still in her quarters. Check on her. Make sure everything's everything's okay. I'm not too comfortable with locking a person in her cabin if we don't need to. But let's just have a look. See how Annie, she's doing. If you saw what we saw, you wouldn't call her a person. If. If she has this. No, we if this is even a thing. We're at speculating least, right now. At least just to warn her, if anything. So you all begin making a very slow and purposeful move as you get through the station and the place feels so much smaller than it did previously. Every little corner, every shadow in this darkened red light illuminated space just seems to scream that something is there in the corner waiting for you. And this oppressing, deepening darkness that is constantly surround you is what is on your mind as, as you especially, Genevieve, can just hear that voice that just <clears throat> piercing deepening, darkened voice that is 
in your mind as you get closer to where Annabelle's quarters are and you just hear screaming as you get closer, just screaming as loud as they possibly can, Annabelle's voice, and she's just yelling, why, why, why? Annabelle, Annabelle! Voice, watch the ears. Um, but the, uh, uh, you hear the, it's just here as the continued cries of her just yelling into, just why, why? There's no reason. It's just the moon. <laughs> the fucking moon. Oh, God. And there's this delirium in her voice that you can hear as just she seems to be crying or laughing. There's some bridge in between there that's so hard to tell. But you know there's a porthole in her room that she can see out. And you know that she probably has saw and seen the same thing that you have. Um, what do you do? Okay, we need to sedate her again. She's going to be a problem. Good luck with that. Okay. I mean, do we though? Can we just maybe leave her in her cabin? That's where she wants to be. I am totally on board with that agreement. Where she can hurt herself? I'm also trying to look out for her right now. Better her than us, Danny. We're it, still alive on here. We still got a chance. It doesn't have to be a dichotomy. It doesn't have to be one or the other. They're not mutually exclusive. No, 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 but we, we can find some compromise. I mean, she said she wants to be left alone, and we brought up that maybe she's already contaminated. If we go in, we would just contaminate ourselves. We have to look out for the greater good here. She's exactly right, Danny. At this point, you actually hear Annabelle's door opens at this point as she swings open, and you hear her scream, Fuck you all! Just... End it now! And she shoves herself past you and throws herself through the causeway as she starts grabbing a hold of pulleys and is just moving through the space station as her. fast as you can. I want to try and catch her. Catch her on the legs. Yeah. You hear her going, it's just, the moon's gone! We're fucking dead! Everyone is dead! Two one for me, two one for, for you. You take it, but you grab a hold of her legs. You get both arms around her naked feet as she's moving herself forward. And she comes around and she's taking her arms and she's just turning around and she's just trying everything she can to rest your hands off of her legs at the moment. I want to pull yeah. myself up her yeah. body. Daddy, and get don't, arm around Daddy, her throat. no, just stop. Just let it happen. Just let it all happen. I need you to relax right now. Annie, relax. Relax. <laughs> relax. Breathe. Relax. And she just takes another just adrenaline burst as you're clasping around her neck and she digs her teeth into your Ew! arm as hard Somebody as she can. Get something! She bites into it and just starts pulling at you as much as you can. What do you do? Just let her go! Just let her go! She'll and do what? She'll bring the station down. Choke her out, Danny. Choke, choke her out? I'm trying. <laughs> right, choke her out. Okay, see if you can bring her to an unconscious state as she is digging into your flesh with every ounce of strength she has. One. A success, one for one. Okay. All right. Tell me how it happens. Okay, so I was hoping we'd be able to sedate her yeah. or that we'd have a less violent way of doing this, but... She's given me no choice, yeah. and I tighten my arm around her and throat. And you can hear so it's the, the stealing the wind from her, and she's like, you fucking asshole, you self-righteous, egotistical prick. Just, just relax, stop, 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 stop. You know everything. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And she passes out. Oh, fuck. And you look down, it is bleeding. It is bleeding. She she not only bit through your arm, but she bit through the skin, and you're seeing as these tiny droplets okay? of blood. Yeah, I'm fine. Just, let's get her strapped to her bed and lock her door. She's right, you know. We don't know everything. Why do we presume that we're the ones with the answers? Because we're still alive. Yeah, what's our alternative? Give up and die? Look, maybe this doesn't work. Maybe we launch the module and we just fucking hit the moon. I don't know, but we're definitely gonna die on here if we don't do anything. At least give her some food and water before we lock her in. We'll put some in the room. 
I'm going to grab a med kit that was near the right. office that she just came out of. Yeah. And I'm going to try and help suture his wound wrapping, yeah. which is basic gauze. And so. I'm going to pull a uh, syringe from the same pack as well mm -hmm. that has the very heavy sedative loaded into it. Uh, and and I'm just going to hold it up and be like, well, we either inject her with this now and, you know. So you just want to hold on to it with the syringe? I want to inject her with okay. the syringe. So you put the sedative into her unconscious body and then you... Um, Stacy and Genevieve, you kind of take her body floating and put her back into her bed, leaving her with some food and water, and um, lock the door. Sorry, Annabelle. We shouldn't have taken that choice away from you. You, as you kind of lay her down, you can see that she's been furiously writing in something in a journal that's close in hand, just penning away. They are just inked with tears at this moment, just all over it. And you can see through her porthole off to the side, you can see as the moon is just coming into its orbit and it's just slightly peering through, but you can just see the distance between the chunk and the larger mass of the moon is just drifting just next to each other, just like, just like if you broke a cookie. I'm just watching it peel away. I'm going to go through, I'm looking through her papers, trying to <laughs> read what she said, and I get this kind of just, it's just the same sentence. She just wrote the same sentence over and over and over. What does it say? It says, sh sh shadows aren't only in the day, shadows are the night. Two sentences. Shadows are only in the day. Shadows are only in the night. And shadows are only in shadows are in the day and shadows are the night. Yes. Shadows are in the day and shadows are in the night. Over and oh, over. Yes. And over. Well, you know, it's very poetic for being on the dark side of the moon. Okay. <clears throat> She's not gonna survive in there. We are down robotics. We are down navigation, and we are down a pilot. <sighs> and I mean, do we even know that the course correct we did before will be on the same trajectory now that the moon's mass is completely different? I don't know. I'm not a physicist. At this point. I have no idea. <sighs> we can only cross our fingers and hope. Okay, so I guess- And if I we wanna do another mm -hmm. one, if we want to try and alter the trajectory again, we, we have might. to drop power off the module to do that, then we can't launch the module. If we disconnect the module and shut the power down where Leslie was, was, we may be able to spare a few volts for another boost. I mean, can we, can we shut the power down pretty much everywhere else? I checked all those cabins and they were empty. We should. So you want to isolate the there's no sense in keeping power open. Right. Up and running. The yeah. doctor's right. We've already channeled almost everything to life support. We've shut down almost every non-essential system on the station right now. The only things left are life support, a few lights, and comms. We turn off the We're lights. Turn off the lights everywhere, but maybe one room that we hole into, and turn off the life support maybe everywhere, but one room that we hole into, provided that isn't some zombie plague, and now that you've been bitten, you start eating rats and Yeah, that doesn't, that's not a real thing. It's not, it's not a fucking... There, we don't even know if there is a disease. We know they both manifested similar symptoms, but a lot of people can get sick a lot of ways, especially up here. Sure. Um, so, if I'm hearing you correctly, you'd like to hold out inside of a module somewhere and turn off life support lights anywhere else. Where would you like that to be? You don't have to be specific to the map. You just tell me if it's, is it a lab? Is it a, is it a, um, service module? Is it a cargo block? What would you like to, to hold up into? I suggest we leave life support on in as much of the system as po uh, station as possible because if we leave rooms uninhabitable, we will not be able to get through them if we need to. That's not a solution we should take as plan A. Lights, fine. Uh, basic stuff like that, fine. But we need to be able to breathe in the whole station right now. We need to be somewhere 
where there's four doors around us. We gotta close the entrances. The module right next to uh, airlock one, we can access the module, the launch module from that point. We can also lock down most of the rest of the ship. The food and water can be stored in there and I can bring in the ham radio. Do it. Right. So you basically get together as much as you can to lock down the single modular. You bring in whatever you've managed to put together that you can hotwire directly into this radio and you sit there in the red light and you wait. Genevieve, uh, I think I saw in the commotion you pull a, a laptop out of your off office. Do you still have that by any chance? Yeah, I mean, I grabbed everything that I could from my station. Um, uh, what room did I end up leaving? Well, it's all in the same area, if you have it all together. I'm assuming at this point you've all found a module, you've brought whatever you can bring mm -hmm. into it, and you've shut mm -hmm. the one door, the one exit out that you can get out into, and you've shut it and you've put the lights on their lowest setting, and you've off life support everywhere but where you are. So whatever you manage to grab from your laboratory, you have with you. So I, I do have my, my laptop and charger. I, I, I grab my, my notebooks and, and just some of the cultures that I could... Shit. Shit. What? One of them's missing. Which one? One of them's missing. Oh, God. Okay, you dropped a sample, so what? So what? The whole reason why I'm here is to conduct this research. And maybe, maybe if we get it out alive, at least I have something to show for it. It's still going to be in the labs. It's still in there somewhere. I'm sure we Do can Do you want to go into it. where Barfy McRat, <sighs> Captain? When <laughs> and however we get help or a team is sent up to recover the station, I'm sure it'll still be there. Time ticks as you stay inside of this module and slowly agonizingly the minutes pass i'd like to be on the radios this whole time just trying to send or receive any sort of signal and i i'd like if genevieve will allow it to be on her laptop trying to do the same i'm going to be kind of just looking out the window a little distracted like my mind is on something else right well as you go and sit in your private moments contemplating what you can using the limited amount of power that is available to put this laptop to use and using the radio to try to find signals wherever you can get it. It just sits. Time stands still, almost. But you know it is passing. And you feel like at some point you should be getting close to when you've broken the orbit mm -hmm. and come into the light but it doesn't come. The light doesn't arrive, and you still feel this omnipresent dark shape, and it has this halo around it, should you take the opportunity to go look at it. Yeah. And it's infuriating how much it's blocking your just lifeline at this stage. And that's when the tinking, which at first was very light and minor, just every once in a while, like, dong, 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 dong. And it was the only sound to break the monotony of your key tapping and you tapping on the radio. Now starts to come in earnest. You can hear it. In fact, the first time you're really aware of it is when, <gasps> boom! as something just collides across the side of the module you're in, as you hear, it just metal just for a second and hissing. Small, minor, just tiny bits. Something hit the airline outside, Danny. Okay. We're spewing oxygen into the atmosphere, Danny. Shit. shit, 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 shit. Okay, um, I, I'd, I'd like to, can I hear any sort of distance in terms of the hissing? It's in this room. It's in the room. Absolutely. Okay, I'd like to explore the room to try and find where a leak may have emerged. Oh, Two ones. I'm gonna... No successes. 
I'm actually going to burn. What is it? A trait. It's my uh, vice. Greedy. Greedy. How do you want to apply greedy into this situation? That's a good question. Um, well, I mean, we haven't determined success or failure yet, so should I roll this, see if I actually succeed, and then go from there? If you think it'll help. Yeah, let's see whether or not this even goes well to begin with. No. No. Uh, does not go well at all. So, thus ends our scene. Eight candles, eight truths. First, the world is dark. This conflict has failed. Danny, you cannot find the air leak. You don't know where it is. And there's some greed that is invoking inside of you right now. Something's happening. There's... There is a truth that needs to be spoken right now. And it is an opportunity to leverage your vice if you so wish. Um, and you do have the first truth. While exploring for the leak in the room, I sequester off a small pile of supplies, water and food in a storage cabinet to use for myself, should I have to attempt an escape alone. You hide supplies mm -hmm. somewhere. Genevieve. Uh, we're still, we're still able to breathe for the time being. I look out the porthole and I see Leslie floating by. <laughs> Four. Five. I have uploaded all of my camera footage. I've transferred it all to Genevieve's laptop in the time that we're sitting there, assuming the worst. Leslie is still moving. <laughs> the hissing stops. I can still hear that noise. Oh, the voice. Or the noise. Genevieve, you're seven, which means, Joseph, you get the last one, last truth. The voice is getting louder and undeniably loud. Like it sounds like it's going from a yawning moan to metal churning and like a gear moan. Like it's, it's a mechanical human-like groan. If I may, because I've been in this setting a few times already, it is a hum. Mm -hmm. It is a deep throaty, full-blown hum, as if like, have you heard Tibetan throat singing? Mm -hmm. Yes, oh, yeah. double, yeah. double. How that double boy. harmony attitude, it's, it is a sound, it, but it's not human in that kind of throaty way, but it is, it is guttural. resonating, guttural, deep, and it does seem to be on itself as far as harmony goes, yes. We pick up our scene immediately where we left off. You are looking, Danny, frantically for whatever this sound is, and you use this opportunity more to sequester supplies away than you are really to truly find the leak that is around there. It's something inside of you is clicking. What are you thinking right now, Danny? What is going on through your brain? That if, the, if there's a leak in the hull, we're not going to survive much longer at all, but... If it comes to it, if everyone does succumb or things go south, I need to be able to try and get off this station even if it's alone. Okay, Stacy, you have a laptop filled with media content right now. The power's low. I know what you want to do, so just tell me. Tell me what you want to do. I need to, and for Genevieve's sake as well. This holds our legacy, and if this is the end, this is all that's left of us. And your work, and your work, and all of our work. 
And if there is anything left on Earth, we need to somehow get this footage there. There's a problem with that. There's limited power supply, and you're choosing to be on that right now. I mean, would you like to take the lithium polymer battery out of this laptop and somehow use it to... Well, actually... It still needs to be... There's... There is a problem with that. Um, we should have seen the sun by now. We've, we've come around the far side of the moon. I, maybe the math is wrong, but this is when we'd be in sunlight. Okay. And well. I don't see the sun. Uh, sure, sure. Well, you know, uh, like, like we discussed, the trajectory would be off because of the moon splitting apart and stuff, but that doesn't mean that we're never going to see the sun, right? Just means that not when we calculated. It's... It's supposed. It's supposed to be right there. Yeah, it's, it it's will. The it will be right. Thing there. in the sky. Maybe it will be right just there. Just moving slower. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe we need another boost. Maybe we lost time when whatever hit us hit us and it spun us off. Sure. I, I, I can look at Dimitri's notes again, but I I don't think anything left is left that can help us. So there's a couple of options here, considering how I'm interpreting what you would like to say and just using the knowledge of the space station at hand. You're right. And I'm going to say for the purposes of this, you've been running off laptop battery, not pulling from the grid. Right. The battery's low. It's to the point of where it's on sleep mode. You've got maybe a couple of hours before it is dead. Sure. Um, you can boot up the flight module again. You're in the, and we're going to say you're in the same room that you did it the first time, so you can reroute the power again to go check out the flight module and use the boosters to recorrect course again. Probably will be nearly the end of your power. Um, and yeah, we'll leave it there. I'm, I'm also open to whatever one else wants. Trying to, to course correct right now it means we'd be doing it blind. We don't have a navigator, and it means virtually draining the life support. It also, I mean, we don't, we don't even know what the the, the mass of the moon is right now, or you know. No, it'd be a guess. It'd be literally just taking a shot in the dark. Well, a shot in the dark is better than floating forever in the dark. It's better than doing nothing. Not if it drains our life support. We're already down to dregs right now because of the gambit we pulled trying to get the module reattached. Okay, so the other option, then just to play devil's advocate, is to leave the life support on and have it run as long as it can and what, hope that an envoy from Earth comes up here with more supplies? The other option, now that we've appeared to round the far side of the moon, is to try and use the module to... Dun, dun. Jesus. Just as it slaps again, another large crease just collides right into the capsule yet again. Uh, Danny? She's outside. She's outside. Who's outside? Leslie's outside. And at that point, you can hear hands just scratching along the side of the metal casing as something just seems to be taking a wet hand and just running it as if taking it across a newly washed car as just she's alive outside how did she get outside i have how no idea alive? okay there's a lot going on right now there's no way we can stay on this station and survive I we need to get on the module and try and get off you guys have a return path programmed into the module. This is not where we intended to launch from, but if we can repurpose that, we may be able to get us onto a safe return trajectory. Okay, and j j just to explore options, I know we don't have a lot of time, but I mean, Le Leslie seems to be able to survive out there. If Leslie can survive out there, th then maybe we, we can. No. I don't, that's not really what I'm getting from that, personally. Okay, okay. I, I don't want to be like that. No, oh, there's okay. something going on sure, with her. Yeah, you're right. <sighs> so this... I don't, I don't, I really don't see any other way right now. So is it to the module? Yeah, if that's what everybody wants to do, I'm on board. We gotta get off the station. We gotta go. Fine. Okay. All right. Okay. So that involves opening the door up that you have locked and going back into the station, which is currently has zero light and zero life support. And well, no, we, we, I think we left the life support running but turned all the lights off. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I see. Okay. So as you come to the door, you start to 
pull it open and you clear the airlock and you see the darkness of the International Space Station laid out in front of you. You can still hear the movements. Does she, do the movements still seem to be following us? It's just, it's just sound. Okay. It's just sound, Stacy. And when you're in a tin can, it feels like sound is coming from you everywhere at this point. And as you open the door, you can feel the brisk, musky air of the stale air mm -hmm. that is from the station just wash over you as this dank, humid air um, follows you. I'd like to search um, some of the supply panels along the side of the, the walkways for a mag light or just sort of big flashlight. Okay, go for it. Oh, you've mm. got to be shitting me. One, one, no sixes. <sighs> That's your hope. Yeah. Uh -oh. Yep. <sighs> no. Thus we end our scene. Seven candles, seven truths. We first start with the world is dark. Denny, you seem to be taking a lot of the first truths lately, but I implore you to do it yet again. What is the first truth? I did not find a handheld flashlight, but did find an LED headlamp. So you found the headlamp. Mm -hmm. All right, Genevieve. I grabbed a uh, like utility pocket knife. You grabbed the pocket knife. I made sure the EVA suit was still intact for a spacewalk. So are you just, is there a truth that you're checking Make an sure EVA suit? A, yes. Okay, absolutely. The sound of Leslie's hand, uh, presumably on the outside of the space station, seems to follow us as we move through the hallways and into different chambers. You haven't seen the sun yet because you're on a collision course with the moon. Ham radio though largely silent until now, has started flickering to life with a voice I can almost make out. Last one. The darkness feels suffocating. Right. Danny, you are leading your crew through. Genevieve, Joseph, you've grabbed whatever you can to go into it. Stacy, you have your ears trained on this door, this, this module that you're in, and you swear to God it's following you. You can just, with your mind's eye, just picture Leslie out there using whatever grip they have, momentum, just hugging onto this thing, pulling themselves across for all that it's worth. And Genevieve, noise. This is the dark humming into your brain. It wants you to take that knife. It wants you to hold it. It feels safe. It's so comforting to have it in your hand right now. Stacy, you want something. You need something. This, the fact that Leslie is so close to you, it terrifies you. There's something going on in your mind right now. It's more than just why you came up here. What, what are you thinking? I am trying so desperately to find hope right now in everything that's going on when it seems like all is lost. And in my mind, there's always a solution. There's a solution to every problem. You just have to find it. But you're so, having a hard time finding that it right now. Sure. I mean, I'm asking you. Yeah, I, I, I'm starting to go places that don't make a lot of sense only to have a place to go. Right. Danny, as you um, lead the crew out, going through it, you suddenly hear the ham radio flicker on. 
Hello? What? That's so there. Can, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Oh God! We're on the International Space Station. What's going on down there? You continue to hear static as something continues to come on, and you finally hear a different voice, something else clasp upon, and you hear it. We know true. One dark. They come from three. Don't go towards. And someone, it's very, it's not good information, but someone's listing, listing something, truths that seem to be laid out. Okay, well, the radio it is working. I'm, I'm hearing someone, but it's not making any sense. The signal's not strong enough right now. Okay, we gotta, it'll get better as the orbit gets closer to Earth. It's something. It's something, and I can try and tweak it and boost the signal, but first we gotta get to the pod. Are you bringing it with you? Yeah. All right, so you Kay. exit through the door. Yeah. And you go. go through. And and I'm taking point with the... With the point. With the... Yeah, with the light. So you can keep looking through. And as you kind of are, again, grabbing and moving through with your emergency light, and it is the one piece of white light that you've had so far in this entire moment. So everything has just been red emergency lights for weeks at this point and this one bright white light is just so stark and just to see color, just to see a small amount of normalcy as you're looking across the space station is both gratifying and also jarring at the same time as normalcy is back but it is not. And Danny, as you continue to move and you move forward, you see the module in front of you, and you know that you have to go down in order to get into where it is, so you need to move up and then go down into the space to get to where you're connecting and could potentially disconnect away from it. And as you're moving forward, you get closer and closer, and then that's a moment when a head lifts up and you see the eyes just, and a hand block its face. <laughs> and it's that dark, dirty blonde hair that you know of to be Annabelle as you continue to see blood across her mouth and it looks like her stomach has been torn in from the inside and you can see pieces of her flesh just seem to be coagulating and something in her stomach is wiggling. It's physically moving as you see something just flapping in the zero G as it makes its way up into her body cavity and she just starts shaking her head and convulsing as she looks up and she grabs a rung and flings herself towards you again. Jesus, fuck! Can we all see I'm that or are we like single file right just now? Just single file through, but you do hear it. You do hear the convulsing. You do hear the tiny, tiny screeches of something. <laughs> so I'm going, my intent here is to literally, as a just reflex, just right. clock her. Right, as you do. One, oh, one, several, sex several successes. Ooh, two ones. All right, tell me how it happens. Okay. Uh, so she's rocketing toward me right, right. now, just yeah. using the momentum from her her push, and I, I focus the light on her face, which and appears to yes. yeah, really get to her, and as she's coming up and able to see where she's going now, um, I just reflexively reach out and just catch her right in the temple. All right, you just give her a right jab as you watch, as you just connect with her temple and her head just whong, just hits the side of the module cabinet as it just bounces and you see as her body is disoriented as it starts doing small turns in the zero G as you look at your hand and you look at the blood upon your hand and you step back and your momentum does not stop even with the clocking. In fact, if anything, that momentum pushed you towards the other direction and you find yourself bong and you feel metal clasp against your lower back as you impact against the side oh. of the module and all of you tumble 
like a child who didn't get off the slide in time and you just all buckle into each other as you slowly all pool into a group right in front of this open space. Can we see Annabelle's body? Uh, it's spinning, it's tumbling. And I see her body spinning towards an unused portion uh, where an airlock is and there is there's a two it's a two door system so she's going towards the first door uh -huh. and we're lucky because the opening device is close to me to open that door. Are you lucky? Am I lucky? Um, I'm taking out my camera and using what juice is left to try to film what Annabelle looks like right now. And my knife is out, ready to attack if that doesn't work. Got it. So I'm rolling to see if I, I can does open. Does he get one more die? Yeah, okay, okay, there we go. So I'm rolling to see if I can pull the latch that will open the first door. You want to get her in that airlock. Get her in that airlock. Let's, let's see how lucky Joseph is getting... Annabelle. I'm gonna look at her in the camera, and I just don't. I don't still give a fuck anymore. I'm just yeah. like whatever. You know. Yeah. You push her in. Wow. Wow. Three successes. So you're making no all of the rolls from now on. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I got those. I got those uh, V Dave dice. Yeah. <laughs> so you, yes, you. Please take it away from me. I get. Uh, I get a couple. I think. Okay. So. As as after. Danny punches her, she <laughs> screams and her head rattles against mm -hmm. that, but he comes hurtling back into us. We all fall in the zero grav, but I grab my arm on the side of the tunnel and mm -hmm. just instinctively, I hit the I hit the airlock button, so yeah. the first door just pow, violently opens up, pow. Yeah, and just whacks her. And just smashes her, okay. Yeah. Yeah, the side. I like that. So this idea that you are basically like you said, you'd mentioned she was part in there, but you just kind of watch as because it's all an emergency power. There's no safety protocols inside of this. The emergency airlock ostensibly pins her into the airlock and you can kind of see this um, this this uh, distended gore, as I mentioned earlier, coming from her stomach. And it just is like oozing now over the top of the airlock as it seems to pinch and it's going into her system and you can hear a tiny squeal <coughs> it seems to be there but her body is more just looking around and it is taking pieces of her own flesh and shoving it into her mouth as she is staring towards you but not towards you as she's looking into this thing this thing that's staring in front of her Okay, we gotta move, we gotta move, guys. Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You go past and you throw yourself down and you can see as you get within arm's length, she makes a grab, but very haphazardly, almost as if it doesn't matter at all because there's stuff here. And she puts it back into her mouth Ugh. again as each one of you descends into Christ. the module and you find yourself in a tiny entry module that was used to come up into the space station. It's probably the size of this table. Can we seal off uh, what that looks like? I wanna seal it off. You seal it off, and the four of you sit in this just cylinder, this squat cylinder, as you open. It is blackness, it is darkness inside of here. What do you do? Okay. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna get out of here now. Nothing's is getting through those okay? doors. Is everyone okay? Yeah, we are, we fine. We good. Right, I'm all right. Yeah. I'm all right. Okay. She didn't scratch you or anything, did she? I not, mean, not that time. She bit him before. Uh, no more wounds. Okay. Uh, did, um, did anyone get a good look at what was in her stomach? Yeah, I don't even. I don't want to no. think about it. Okay. There was something. But I heard something. Inside yeah? her. It was like. It's like squeaking, but not. Look. When I told you that Derek Marcus disintegrated, I I wasn't being 100% truthful. Uh, what actually happened was Derek disintegrated, but not all of his body. Something was left behind. There was something new that wasn't Derek. Did it speak? Could we communicate what? with it? Uh, is it in Area 51? I don't know, because that type of information was way beyond my pay scale at the time. But I do know that whenever they brought Derek home, 
whatever they buried wasn't Derek. Okay, we have to assume this is probably happening in a lot of places right now. I don't think it's just us, but our, st our best chances of surviving are still away from this place, even if we have to yeah. try and pilot this thing mostly manually. Sure. We need to get out of here. They knew that that happened to him, that that means nobody's coming for us. And why the hell did they send us up here after that? There's people coming for us. There's, there's people coming for us. So are we gonna genesis in this thing? Well, I'm gonna take a minute first to just tally up what basic supplies we have with us now. Sure. Uh, you have about a quarter of what, actually I would say, yeah, about a quarter of what was originally brought up because it is uh, the handful that you took back and used was uh, a blip in it. At the same time, the supplies that you may have squirreled away I mean, I don't think you brought those with you. So it's basically what you have inside of here. There is enough food. There is enough water to last quite a while. Okay. Okay, next thing is if we're committing to this, I want to reroute the remaining station power to the module. Make sure we're fully topped up and the life support mm -hmm. systems in here will last as long as they possibly can. I can overclock the systems a little bit. Let's overclock the systems a little bit. Please, look at all these beautiful engineering rolls you're making, Danny. Uh, don't make me roll. <laughs> Unless you want someone else to do the engineering for you. Unless Genevieve's feeling a little sassy and not wanting Danny to feel like he's got the grasp on everything right now. Want to work the power? You know, if your arm is... If I if I'm getting, yeah, I'm a mess. If, I, if I'm questioning, I'll talk you through it. What your arms looking like? All right, <laughs> I'll, just, I'll talk you through it. It's those wires. <gasps> one six, one one. Okay. Mm. Genevieve, you've done this once before with the robotic arm. Having Danny talk you through it. Tell me how it goes down. Right. Danny, what do I do? Uh, okay, <clears throat> so uh, first things first, we gotta pull out the main line for the module here. It's designed to route power cyclically, but we need to have it siphon power off the station instead. Okay. Um, we're still connected, uh, we're still latched, thankfully, so you can just reverse, I'll show you that switch there, if you switch that, it reverses the polarity and it and pulls power from. And some station. time later, you're able to get it together and okay. put into it, and you do feel the power come into here and you flip onto okay. the emergency red. Oh, I think I got black. it. I think I did something. All right. Yes. Great. Okay, we should be we should be topped up now. It flickers. It just flickers ever so slightly. Oh shit. Is it supposed to do that? Oh shit. It's fine. Cool. The system cool. is not designed to hold quite this much juice, but it can. Okay. This will give us as much time as we can possibly have in a module this size. So uh, now it's just uh, launching, and let's see. Um, the the built-in trajectory is designed to take you on a return path, but not launching from this position. Right. We're going to have to do some manual jockeying here. Okay. This is the module me and her came up in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. So you're gonna disconnect, and then you're gonna start moving it around as yep. much as you can. Great. Then um, let's disconnect. So you basically, Danny, look at everybody as you kind of go into this, and as you said, if we're ready to do this, you take the, I don't know what these things look like, but for dramatic purposes. Just a big old lever. Just a big old lever. <laughs> just an airplane open the door lever. Mm -hmm. That kind of attitude. And you just, <laughs> and you feel it just slowly coming away as you watch the ISS just drift away from you ever so slowly. And that's when you can start to see just how much it's getting pommeled. And the, you have a single viewport for this. I should make it abundantly clear. Um, so all our heads are huddled there. Right? It's literally about this big, mm -hmm. all right, as all of you are kind of going through it. And before the ISS stays away from your view, you can see as it's just being pelted with rock and debris. And that's when for a singular moment you watch as a bright light thing, just hits your viewport and the sunlight is so bright 
and jarring and intense as you've pushed away from the space station. It's just a single beam and it just kind of hits against the wall as this beam of sunlight crests as you move just 100 feet or so away. Wow. Okay. And we have no solar panels on here. I but we have that. power. We have a lot of power in the module. We do. And That's this right. was always the plan. Yeah, yeah. And you know what's The funny? module's batteries have a, have a shelf life of, of, at least, of at least 40 hours. Great. Cool, cool. I, you know, I, I, I feel like <laughs> in every sci-fi movie you watch, you know, like the goal is to get to the space station so that you're not out on your own. And then you get there and you find the aliens, right? And then the goal is to get back off. And, and we did. And this should be the happy ending part. We're heading to our happy ending part. It might be. I, I hope. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping it is. We, we all Except the Earth's cracked. People are well, dying. The moon's cracked. The moon's cracked. We don't know Earth. where the Earth is. The moon's cracked. Right, right. We left Annabelle. Our crew's disappeared. I, I think she's better off right now. I don't know how much was left of Annabelle. Leslie was just contracted something. It was just yeah, floating around. All of us are given emergency training in the event that we lose the pilot, in the event that we lose the station. Yes. We all have a basic understanding of how to get the module mm -hmm. down, but it's... It relies on quite a lot of guesswork. We're supposed to have contact with Houston or Moscow the entire time, which we don't have right now. We have no one to talk us through this. And that's considering if we if we had a normal gravitational pull, which we don't. But you brought the comms, right? I have the radio, okay, yeah. Okay, that's something. This module is equipped with several fail-safes. Uh, not all of them are apparent or maybe even ready right now due to our power, but there is a possibility that the pre-routed course could still be in the Nava system, the navigation system. And if we can get enough juice on the solar panel, we can triangulate where we are in relation to the orbit, and maybe play, the computer can plan a boost. We have enough power to make it happen. Let's see if we can dig it up. But maybe we have to manually get further into the sun first. I need that so that if you're gonna plot any kind of manual course to get into the sun, there is no solar panels in the module, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. But as you mentioned, the module does have some power and you do have a little bit of fuel left in those boosters. So, so let's see if we can get that navigational chart pulled up. And if we can, you know, get get around uh, and so more just, into the sun, maybe the comms will start working. We could just start maybe. the burn towards Earth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're in space, so all we need is a push, I, and momentum will take us the rest of the way. All right, all is, right this, so that, is that the thing then? This is the push. This is the push towards Earth. Towards Earth. My man. One for me. <sighs> so close. So. Now, if you have of, of virtue or vice active, you can burn it to re-roll the one. I, my top is my virtue, is what I'm going for, is my wish, is the top? Uh, whatever you have on top is what you can roll for a re-roll of a one. So you could consume that, and, then and it becomes part of the solution, but you can re-roll the die that landed on a one. One, one. Let's do that, I guess, right? Right, okay. it's, Give it's, it to it's me. a choice. What's yeah. the, uh, what's the virtue on top that you're burning. Activate the nuclear warhead disrupting the moon. So oh, that's what's moment. on top of your moment. My you moment, cannot, okay. I can't the burn moment that. is on okay. top. Okay. Yeah. You can't burn that, so then I can't do it then. Okay. Unfortunately. Okay. That's fine, we, we succeeded. Yeah, we succeeded and, and I, wanna, yeah. I wanna watch what Joseph is doing, mm -hmm. just kind of prepping for the worst to make sure I know how to do it. If, if. <laughs> yeah, you're looking at it and, uh, um, well, what exactly, what are you doing, Joseph? Um, I'm, I'm sweating, <laughs> I'm beginning to sweat profusely, and uh, in my brow, the, the droplets are kind of just, they don't fall because we're still in zero G, so they just kind of yeah. float upwards, and um, the small window is starting to get steamed from all the body heat of us inside and not enough oxygen, and I, I kind of pull an Apollo 13 when I just put my hands on the booster thrusters and I just peek out the window and that it's darkness, darkness, and then a sliver just 
It was right by, and as soon as it hits my eye, I... All right, and you go straight for it. You just see that sliver, and you just gun it, and you boost through whatever you have left, and you hit it for, you know, and you don't know if you've run it through all of it, but you're, we're talking one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, let it go, and you can feel the momentum. You can see as the space station just shoo, and disappears, as do things in space do so quickly. And you're watching as the moon now coming into your purview into your tiny port. You see, it just is a huge planet and you can, you're this close to it, you can see the crack, you can see it split. The craters of the moon as they are, you can watch as you can see, it seems to just be, the crack just seems to be drifting just next to each other and you can swear to God you can hear them crunching together as just rock on rock is just like slowly creasing on each other. And you can see that at this point the moon is starting to tilt in a lopsided way as it's just beginning to spin as this crunching rock is into it. And it's enough of a spin that you can physically still see it from the altitude that you are. That you go. Now, the module is designed to survive re-entry into Atmo. Great. And once we hit that, the friction will slow us down. We're coming at it at a pretty good angle right now, and once we're through, in, through all the tough stuff, the chutes will deploy and we land. I have no idea where we're going to touch down, sure. but hoping it's not open water or something, but okay. we can deal with that when we get there. So you are all together in this place, all four of you crammed in this cylinder as you ride through the void of space. I want to get back on the comms now that we can actually see the Earth a little bit and try and uh, make contact with someone. Yep. And I am on uh, Genevieve's laptop, and fortunately this is the type of laptop that has a SIM card in it, so if I can access any kind of cellular data connection from anywhere we are, mm. then I could potentially connect. Hmm, I would, I would have to think about that for a hot moment. No, I know I want it so bad. When he talks to himself, shit hits the fan. Yeah. You know that it's coming. We're, we're gonna die. We're gonna die. It's yeah. <laughs> Put in space. No one can hear you scream. But they can watch you explode. Yeah. Throw a SIM card in there and try to see if by some chance you get some kind of satellite connection. Okay, I'm gonna take the SIM card from uh, my no longer powered cell phone, but take that and plug it in too. All right. One. No, no successes. successes. Can I can virtue? I burn? Do you have a virtue on the top? On the I top? do have a virtue on the what top. What is it? Insightful. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, knowing that I could not connect to anything with the SIM card that I uh, had in what I was originally accessing was a US data connection. I try international connection because the SIM that I was given was uh, through the International Space Station program, which is obviously You're going from a lot a different of different route. countries, going, going a different route, trying to take what I know and apply it. So this funny yeah, thing about sense. EMPs, no. you were high enough to maybe not have it be concerned, but you find nothing. You sit as you watch that little spinning disc as you attempt to connect to a network and you watch it as you wait for that dial to turn to anything. Bloop. Your computer goes dark. Six candles, six truths. Stacy, we start with you. First, the world is dark. The 
laptop is out of power and any data communication we could have hoped to have other than radio is no longer an option. Oh, yes, that was very clear. The the module clockwise. So that's okay. You will have a chance. Um, There is a beam of light coming from the earth. The radio now has a clear signal. I'm growing very concerned about the wound forming in your arm. Would you like to speak a truth about the wound? You can establish like pure cannon. Oh, it's uh, it's infected. Better. First time. Yeah. A piece of the moon is going to hit the module. Six. The food we have on board looks to be not as much as we had thought initially. Six candles. Six truths. The world is dark. As you crest over the edge of the moon, and it is like coming across the horizon of the earth. Like like this could be some nature documentary in which they give you those wonderful space shots as the earth comes into light, but it is the moon. And you see the blue marble that is our planet come into focus as you are now making that return orbit from the moon's trajectory. And let me tell you something to really give you an idea of perspective. When I mean the little blue marble, we've all seen pictures of, you know, the Earth looks like where the moon is. I want you to instead imagine a world in which through your tiny porthole you see one half moon and coming out from the blackness of space you see the earth fill up your entire field of vision. Everywhere from the porthole as far as you can see up, everywhere from the porthole as far as you can see down as these two contrasting colors now barely being illuminated by the sun's light and it is being interrupted as it is more from when your module hits the sun for a hard second and you get the porthole before it comes back and it is darkness again. And they just, it is an otherworldly sight. You are probably looking at the moon being rather than thousands of miles away, more like hundreds of miles away from each other. What do you do? We are way closer to the Earth than we thought, guys. And that's great news? It's fine. Um, uh, As long as we can get into Atmo. At this speed, we're gonna burn up. There's no way we can enter the atmosphere. It'll still slow us down enough. The parachutes will take care of the rest. Okay. We probably have a little bit of fuel left to compensate if we need to. Sure. It'll still be a little while off, so let's focus and right now. Danny, there are pieces of the fucking moon falling in from the sky. And there's nothing I can do about that right now. But if we keep going down, Danny, there's not going to be anything left. We have to go around. Look, look, I'm going to pull him to the porthole, and I'm going to show you how close the Earth is 
And it's one of those you only catch it every few seconds because it has to make a full rotation and come around. But then when it does, and it does take a while, so you catch a second of it before you leave the purview of the earth. And again, we're imagining a world in which you're getting a slow pan of what is in front of you. You see blackness, you see space, you see darkness. And as you come around, you do see just these giant chunks of space rock that just seem to be floating. And they're large, but they seem to be getting bigger as they are coming somewhere. And it is now an asteroid field that you've looked at as you see that the moon has just done another chunk and has splintered. And you now see what was once open space is now a debris field of moon rock laid out in front of you. I have an idea. Absolutely. This module was equipped with certain modifications, not necessarily known in the Geneva Treaty. And by that, I mean we have options. And by options, I mean we have nuclear options on this ship. What? what? The company decided as a fail-safe method that a small but extremely potent warhead would be attached to the module. If Hiroshima and Nagasaki were 100, this thing's a 10. But it still packs a bang. Uh, okay, so we decided is this a, that that... Stockholders, is this a fucking game to you guys? Shareholders and bonds. We thought it was a good idea just in case something needed to happen in evidence. I mean... In case what to needs destroyed. to happen? In case the moon needs to be more more broken up into pieces? I mean, uh, okay, okay. What can we do with this information? Uh, we could fire it at potentially a piece of debris to knock it off course or something. Um, but then, scary, if we do re-enter the atmosphere and the burn up, would, wouldn't we the turn wave, into a nuke? The shockwave would send us flying. We'd be disintegrated in seconds. We have to figure out a oh way. Oh my God. A warhead the size of the Tsar Bama would not be enough to send the moon on a different course. It's like altering the rotation or orbit of a planet. No, not the moon, but maybe maybe a piece of moon debris. I mean, it, uh, at what cost? Then we're gone. Would shooting it off in one direction change our trajectory? Would the would the motion? Yes. In okay. one direction, make us go another direction. It has an equal chance of destroying the capsule. Uh, You'd have to time that. Just, Flawlessly. I, I get what you're getting at with your hope here, Joseph, and I totally understand it, but I want to understand that there is a tiny mini nuke that you've put inside of this thing, a pea, a tiny pea shooter nuke that's somehow into this thing. Correct. I'm, I mean, I'm into it, as it, I always am. Let's call it maybe not even, it's not even necessarily a nuclear missile, it's just concentrated uranium, so, which could be detonated. I, it's still splitting atoms. It's yes. a, a nuclear reaction still is a goddamn nuclear nuclear reaction. Whether it's Nagasaki or whether it is it is it is a area fifty one. Yes. So whether it's a test. Any case, I'm still down. If you are, uh, but yeah, how are you are you going to do this to try to create a a reverse physics effect to try to get you into or clear through the debris field? What is the plan? If we jettison the warhead, it has a remote detonation that we can time for 30 minutes from now. 30 minutes or an hour should give us enough time to clear the blast radius. It's just a thought. If, if this is timed flawlessly, yes, the shockwave would give us a little boost in the direction we'd like to go and clear some of the debris heading towards us. It could work, but that is such a slim chance. I need to reiterate. What else do we have? I do enjoy slim chances as far as conflicts go. <laughs> so this is the perfect chance of something could fail, and let's see if it does. By all means, Joseph. Wow. My God. One six, no ones. Um, briefly, tell me how this thing somehow manages to work. There's a timing device in the warhead that I can set for an hour 
and it's already based in the module as like a torpedo bay when it'll just launch on its own. It has its own self-operating systems. It will carry itself. It won't drain any more of our power, but it will go off in an hour no matter what. You successfully launched it. Does not mean it has to detonate, oh. but you did successfully launch it. Fair enough. So I'm going to give you your hope dice for whatever it's worth. Can't believe I'm handing you a hope dice for sending off a nuke. <laughs> but uh, that's ten candles for you. I tried to make it work. You. I tried to make it. Yeah, no, it's all good. It's all part of the story. So okay. does that mean that that hope picture is burned, or? Um, I'm going to leave it there on it at the moment um, because what has happening if if we get down to the brink, which is something that can happen. Um, the hope dice will go away if he fails with it. Got but it. we're not there yet. Thank your corporate overlords. So it poof, out, and we leave it there. You have half an hour. You have an hour? Out. Hour. You have an hour until this thing goes off. Knowing what might be coming, mm -hmm. um, I'd like to hop back on the phones and try and establish a connection to Earth now that we're so close and the moon is no longer obscuring us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you do get, I mean, the the... It's the, the static is clear at this point. It is not faded, it's not clear. Um, it, is, it is brisk and you are going through the channels as much as you can and you are consistently getting static over and over again. And you occasionally going through each one. It, there's no repeat broadcast. There's no emergency system that those things you heard, those truths earlier, they are not there, but it does stop and you do hear something and it is that humming again, that deep, throaty <laughs> and it is so intense. In fact, you can even hear a higher pitched harmony, like something shrieking in the background. The more you listen to it, the more you dive deeper into it, the more you can hear tiny, unique sounds. It's almost like listening to the sound is like gazing into a mandala. And the more you stare at it, the more you listen to it, the more you can hear and the deeper you go. What do you hear? It's this noise. Um, I unplug the headphones and switch on the speaker on the ham radio. It pops onto it and you just hear it. It's just this resonating this sound upon sound upon sound. And it is... It's on like half the channels. It's... What is that? It is piercing Stacy it hurts so much Joseph it mm. it's drives you insane it feels awful it just is is off-putting in a way that you cannot even imagine can you turn it down can you turn it turn off turn it off oh, God yes turn it off Danny <clears throat> nothing else it's just that I mean I've never felt anything like that before it's like it eats at your mind. <sighs> Upon taking a, another pass on the earth, you're close enough now that you can see the pinheads, just the single black columns and areas in which there isn't cloud cover. And oh, by the way, should I tell you the storms? Oh, the storms that are above the earth, these swirling hurricane-like clouds that are just every once in a while covering the seas. And in the areas in which you can see down to the ground below, they are just like blackheads across the face of the earth, just little pock marks. But it is so consistent. It's geometrically perfect. What is that? Is this happening everywhere? What oh. are those things? You know, like I, I, I would think maybe, maybe they're, uh, you know, craters from from debris hitting. But it's it's too, 
They're all perfectly the aligned. Perfect. Uniform. It's like, it's like they were there all along. Guys, I, 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 I hate saying this out loud, but what if, what if we're it? What if this is it? What if something happened down there and we're, we're what's left? We knew we should have tried to grow plants on the space station. <sighs> maybe maybe we, we missed the worst of it. Maybe there was, maybe it happened and then it's, it's gonna be over and then we can make something out of the earth, even if it's just us. Well, even if we make it, what what is left? What nothing nothing is like what it was before. We don't know what that is. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's, we it's, were pulled into different orbits, and now we don't know what life is like down there. What's wrong? Um, now it just hurts. It stings. Yeah. Let me look at uh, it. Okay. This can't be a coincidence. This can't be a coincidence. Jesus fucking Christ. It's swollen. Oh. You can tell it's discolored at this point. I mean, infection is, you know, usually something that takes a little while in order to get through, but this seems to already be putrefying. How, how are you just okay with that right now? No, I'm, I'd really prefer this wasn't happening, but I can't. You need to Do we have anything it. on board? We need to make a tourniquet so we can cut the blood and just stop the swelling. Just here. Then I'm gonna lose the arm. <laughs> Better lose the arm than lose all of us. Yeah. I mean, you saw the tentacles coming out of the middle of Annabelle, right? If you wanna be Fine. a corpse with a squid arm, well, that's your prerogative. Okay, are we, are we committing We're some kind of yeah. major surgery right well, now? Or just turn it. We're starting with turn it. Okay. okay. I just said turn it. Okay. Pull, she has a knife. I was like, yeah. yeah. I do have a knife. I'm gonna pull my belt um, okay. off my off my suit right. and just tie it around above the elbow. All right. You tie it up around the elbow and you put all the pressure yeah. on it and you, I mean it. Yeah. It's it's the tingling of the lost blood is now more. You're feeling it just as much as the actual pain itself. So. Uh. I would like to see, though, I, because I do so love a good dice roll, oh. Genevieve. I would like to see how how well this is doing. As long as it's not me. One, one, two, six, two sixes. This tourniquet is doing its job. <sighs> okay. Um, how much longer until that thing explodes? 45 minutes. Okay. Let me check on the power, hang on. I wanna see how the power and life support's holding up. Power and life support's fine. It's taking some time and it's going through, but I mean, under normal circumstances, I would say all systems okay. We'll touch the atmosphere in 30 minutes. That's a 15 minute set. <laughs> No. No. No, 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 no. You see it's not a possible. porthole, a hand <laughs> onto it, streaking It's with fucking blood. Leslie. And it opens and you can hear pounding onto it and you hear a gurgling voice. I mean, or God, if you can even hear it, you don't, oh, you don't hear it, but you can hear it. And it's just saying something. It is saying something. Uh, I can't tell what it is. It's it it's it is awful, awful right now. But it pierces into your mind, and it sounds something like "Let me in, let me in." Oh, fuck that! And these hands are pulling, and you can hear it is pounding everything you can. But it is, doesn't sound like a fist pounding against the module. It sounds like a rock being pounded into this steel over and over and over again. There's no way she can get in. This whole thing is solid machine steel and aluminum. There's no way. There's no way. How is she alive? There's no way. Yes. That is the question. 
She'll burn up when we hit Atmo. Yes. Great, great. Uh, should we try to enter atmosphere sooner than 30 minutes in? There's nothing else to propel us. All right. Are you going to wait it out? Wait for this thing to I, go down? I want to see if there's any more juice in the engines. Well, you the can boosters. turn it on. You won't be able to know, but you can turn them on and put it on if you want. I wonder, is there you a way? We can wait for her to hopefully, maybe she's over by the engine. I was going to say. Boost her off. If she wanders that way, we can try and turn them on and just give her a push away from the module. How are we going to get her to wander that way? Someone. We start knocking on the. Someone tap on the window. Yeah, let's try and get her attention. Okay, okay, I got it. Uh, and I'm going to tap on the window. And uh, Leslie, Annabelle, whoever this is, uh, we can hear you. What do you? What is it that you want? How can we help? And so you hear it's something. They are talking to you, but they are not speaking in any voice. You understand. You are hearing, and it is shrieking. It is piercing. But you feel more than you understand this draw towards the earth. It wants you to go to the earth. It wants you to just let it happen, come into it. It is so safe. If you just let them in, everything will be okay. Uh, can I tell if they mean let them in, like let them into the Earth's atmosphere, or let them into they our are, They are telling you, Stacy. you will be spared. You will be granted the final passage if you just let them me in and let them go. They are not for the next place, but you are. We know what you've done. We know that you are chosen. And if you would just let us in, then you will Ascend. Guys, Leslie's still in there. I can I can talk. I'm, I'm communicating somehow with with Leslie. We can't just what it that what we what can't just saying. let her we can't just let her die Snap out there. Out we it. gotta let her in. You're we not gotta talking let her to in. her. Are you fucking nuts? I am. I am talking to her. I can hear her. Well, she needs to back there. Is not to be Leslie. Um, and I'm gonna lunge for anything that's gonna open the. And I'm gonna lunge for her. Yeah, it's oh great. Oh my god. So, um, technically, this is a conflict. Um, definitely oh is god. a conflict, but it's against two people who want to go into it. So, in the purposes of telling the absolute best story, I would like to see Danny, who wants to hold her back, roll this to see how it happens and how it goes down since Stacey is going me the for this. So, please. <sighs> One six, one one. You grab Stacy. You hold her with all of your might. I'm going to roll. One arm, by the way. <laughs> one arm. Yeah. And you grab her and you hold her. And Stacy is still rambling as Stacey. she's going for this uh, airlock. Stacy, we, we have to save Leslie. What is guys? wrong with you? If you open the door, you'll vent the module. We're all gonna die. Stacy, calm down. Stacy, can we just? It's space out there. I'm trying to save someone, okay? All we've been trying to do is work to survive here. How can we not do that? You want to survive? You want to leave that door closed? That's not Leslie out there. If you open the door, we're all gonna get sucked into space. Then who's alive? Stacy. Who's left? You're in here with us. You're not out here with her. You're in here with us. You're not out there with her. She should be in here. Don't listen to her. She should be in here. She should not be in here, Stacy. She should be. You I'm saw gonna, her, she's not right. I'm gonna uh, see if I can get free yeah, from his grasp and instead of instead of lunging to the uh you just wanna to the just hatch, I'm gonna try to go back to the uh like the porthole. The porthole. Okay. Yeah. This is this one's for you. Okay. I'm yeah. gonna try to go back to the porthole and escape there. Ooh, one six. One success. All right. So I wrestle free of Danny's one arm. Um, oh. <laughs> and uh, shove him away from me yeah. and go back over to the porthole and tap on it and say, Leslie, I can hear you. I'm trying to let you in. Please remember that I'm trying to let you in. And at that point, you see the rock 
that Leslie had been holding on to, and it comes down upon the porthole with as much effort as can be managed as it just, can you watch it, it's spider webs, just for a second. I want to go over to the command uh, panel and hit the boosters, for whatever juice is left, <laughs> okay. to try and shake her loose. All right, All right. keep rolling, buddy. <laughs> get that one, too. So, yeah, keep you rolling, buddy. <laughs> Things Come on, Danny, things. take us home. Oh, oh, no! Oh, fuck. All right, no sixes, no ones. Oh, this no. scene ends <laughs> immediately. Oh, God. Five candles, five truths. We are getting into a danger territory now since we are more than halfway <laughs> no. done. Um, decisions, we can get into a situation where dire consequences absolutely can happen in the circumstances. So with this said, five truths. Danny, you have the pleasure yet again of giving us the first truth. So it didn't work because it, it failed. Um, <clears throat> but I'll say... The remaining fuel in the module, the fumes, mm -hmm. were just enough to jostle, to, to sort of shake and, and, and lurch the command module. So uh, she's just hanging on by a thread. Yeah, by one grasping hand yeah. where the, the edge of the booster rockets are. I think that's nice. Mm. <laughs> Go ahead, Genevieve. The radio spontaneously erupts with us. Yes with more sound. Okay, all right. Joseph. I <laughs> look out the window with a horrified look seeing the nuclear warhead much closer than it should be. Stop it! Stop! <laughs> oh, God. Four. I take what was a, um, a sturdy metal like meal tray yeah. that was on board and uh, use it to try to finish cracking the porthole glass. Okay. So you found something to hit the porthole with from, from the, the other inside. side. Yeah. To let Leslie in. I will oh. end you. <laughs> the warhead goes off. <laughs> five candles, five truths. <laughs> They've been spoken, and we start our scene immediately with a bright flash of light just erupting out of uh. where it's searing, and you feel first the small shaking, and then in your mind, more than around you, you hear the screech <laughs> as Leslie is evaporated uh. off of the module, and you begin to shake and you begin to move, and everything begins to just start to jostle and get into it, and you can hear just metal bending and twisting and just everything, and more importantly, you can hear the sounds of impact on impact on impact on impact as your module is just flung with as much force as possible as it is now careening at a speed straight towards the planet. That was not 45 minutes. Uh, you know, these things aren't, aren't an exact science. Fuck! Nuclear physics. You cannot hold still. All of you are pressed through just the sheer velocity that you're in. All of you are on the back edge of the wall now as you're starting to get closer to where the atmosphere is and you can feel your body. You can barely even get a hand up off the ground because the G-forces are just so extreme right now. As we were forced back mm -hmm. to the back of the module, yeah. I leaned my body to try and catch the radio oh, yeah. with my body so it wouldn't yes. hit the wall. Got it. And you. No. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, that's cute. Roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. No successes. No successes. No successes. One, the one. Radio. Doesn't even matter now. No. <laughs> Click and pop. So. <sighs> yeah, this is where things get fucked. <laughs> Uh, four candles, four truths. Things are happening. Danny, I can't believe I'm taking this one from you. I don't even care. You don't get the first truth. <laughs> You've had so many first truths instead, but I'm not going to take it. I'm instead going to give it to Genevieve at this stage. First truth, four, and this point. 
I'm, I'm at some point going to stab at you for putting our lives in danger. You can also say that it happens. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I swing at you for trying to break that glass open. With the pocket knife? Yeah. Okay. I, uh... One more time, sorry. Would you mind, and again, for the purposes of getting into it, would you just like to say, I stab you with the pocket knife? I stab you with the pocket knife. Right. Um, we hit the Earth's orbit. You hit the Earth's orbit. Three. Um, I very surprised by the stab wound that I've just received in my lower left abdomen, um, use all of my energy to try to, I mean, I would I would assume she's, because of the G-force and us being pulled back, she's now on yeah. top of me, I guess, if. Or next to you, adjacent to you. You can, with your truth, you have power. Okay. Um. Being very surprised by the new wound to my lower left abdomen, I uh, use the G-force pulling us back against the wall to um, get that arm up and just let the G-force take my elbow back straight into her windpipe. So you... <laughs> so you yes, you I. get her off you. I get it lifted enough to. How about this? This is this is a, this is the way I like to interpret the truth. You get her off her and you pin her down using the G force. Great. How's that sound? Sure. Okay. We begin this scene. Four candles. Four truths. The world is dark. The world is always dark. Did you have a truth? There was. Oh, oh four. Four. I get a truth. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Um. Let's just keep it going. Stacy, you can steer healer. You could still hear Leslie's voice in your head, even though she's gone. All right. You have now erupted. The G-force is pulling your module and all of your bodies laid up against it. Genevieve, you have used this opportunity to throw something in, but now you can feel a just lack of air as just Stacy's arm is against your windpipe and you're grabbing with all that force and you can hear her gasps of air at the moment. What do you do? Get, get I want to reach over to get Stacy off of, to roll her over. Joseph. Uh, I'm, I'm going to grab the controls and go for another boost because we're just hitting the orbit. I have to slow down the module. I'm trying. So you're trying to recorrect. I'm trying to recorrect. And I'm not even, I know this is chaos, but I watch him do it, and I just try and. Yeah, I've got this, don't worry. Recorrect <laughs> as much as you possibly Re -correct can. Recorrect as much as I possibly can. Okay, try to find a safe landing spot. One for me. <laughs> and <sighs> you. Oh, he didn't roll his hope die. I did not roll my hope die. You still got a success, but you're good. Yeah, it doesn't matter Don't if that's rolled. Reason. In the future, roll that, because that succeeds on a five or a six. Oh, okay, I did not know that. So you okay. you gun it and using, again, just the dredges of whatever, and it's more at this point just flitters. Just trying to turn it anything I can, yes. And you take it as you steer as far away from the ocean as you possibly can, trying to find a coast or anything that you can land on so that you won't be stuck in the middle of the ocean should and when and if this thing lands and you get you push and move with all of your forces you can fighting against that g-force you can start to see the front of the module is turning red that iron hot just heat shield is absorbing so much heat you can see it's starting to make an effect on the outer and it's starting to get warm in this thing as you continue to careen at a wild velocity in Genevieve Danny. I, I, I know you want to try to get Stacy off, but Stacy, I am more interested in what you want to do right now. She stabbed me, the bitch stabbed me. You're trying to vent the module. Uh, no, not anymore. Leslie, for all we know, isn't even there 
three more. Stab her again, Genevieve. What the fuck? Really? Okay, everyone, calm down. Enough. Just get off of her. <gasps> if you stab me again, I swear to fucking God. What the fuck is wrong with what you? What's wrong with you? You just stabbed you another human You killed being. us all. Yes, because you're going to kill us all. I was trying to save Leslie. You know what? Leslie cannot be saved right now. And you know what? You're not talking to her. Who made you God? In your freaking Who head. made you omnipotent God? Me. No Wait, one. Enough. You sound like a four-year-old. It's done. She's gone. You sound like an insane person. Talking to somebody who should not be alive. They tried to kill us all. And what did you do? You grab a freaking tray to try to just blast the freaking window and kill everybody? None of I'm us. I'm the crazy one. You I'm the four-year-old. Dabbed me. You deserve Genevieve. it. You deserve it. None Andy, of us. Look at the ground. It's coming closer. I'm trying to tilt it up. <laughs> the porthole is the all viewpoint that you have at this point, and you're watching as the shattered, windowed porthole out of nowhere just. <laughs> And as you start to hear the atmosphere come in, you can hear wind gusting through, and you can start to see and more feel than anything just the wild as breaking into the atmosphere. You hear just everything displacing the air inside of you as this porthole, having lost its integrity from being hit on either side, is now just careening, and you can see fire just. <laughs> Leslie, are you out there? Are you out there, Leslie? Can you hear me? There's no oh, one out there! God. And. What do you do? What kind of danger does this pose that we can see in terms of the porthole being uh, broken? Uh, the porthole being broken at this point is literally just the point that it's creating, it's it's creating such a vacuum. Because we're in the atmosphere the already because it's lit up, atmosphere. so there is already oxygen because we're in the atmosphere. Yeah, so is, that's the thing. Is the tray okay. large enough to we can cover the hole? That's the thing, it's the vacuum because it's now pulling you all towards the hole. It's trying to yeah. suck you out of this tiny porthole so right if, now. Does the tray cover it though? Try to, try to cover that. Does it cover it? Does, Does it, it cover it? it? Uh, can I? Can I? Burn? Yeah. What's on top there? Um, I'm. I'm. Covetous. How are you applying covetous in this circumstance? My That's tray. It's my knife. <laughs> Get away from this me. This is my life. I'm taking care of myself. <laughs> We're doing this. Okay. Um. <laughs> so, uh -huh. <laughs> Genevieve, as you grab this tray and you you are looking at Stacy just like you fucking crazy bitch. How could you do this? You grab that tray and you feel the air just as much as anything else take you as you're guided towards this porthole and you slam the tray up against the porthole and it sticks, but you can still feel it pulling into it and you can hear the sound of the wind just <laughs> coming beneath it and you look towards your group and you're thinking something. What do you say to them? You're lucky this tray, this, this tray worked because otherwise I would have used you to block it. Suddenly the tray breaks and you feel as your arm, which was the closest thing at the hand, just flies out of the window and the velocity is so strong and the heat is so great, your arm is gone within seconds as you feel this thing pull itself out and suddenly your arm, your torso, your neck, you scream as part of you is being pulled out through this porthole, this tiny little sense that is not enough room for your body and you're watching the three of her as suddenly, as quick as it happens, her body is just cracked and boned and flung out from this porthole to disappear. Oh, Jesus Christ. Genevieve. Oh, my God. Genevieve, oh, my God. What have you done? Thank you so much for playing. <laughs> I really appreciate you taking the time to come with Nora. Well done. I'm going to have to ask you to leave my table now. I hope your knife's still there. <laughs> Three candles, three truths. Normally Nora, Genevieve, would give us the first truth, but since she was forced out through a porthole, I will speak the first truth. Your 
you're going to hit the ground. You're going to hit the ground. <clears throat> Joseph. The parachute's activated. Oh, wait, no. Oh. Um, yes, sorry, it would go uh, clockwise. Okay. But you can still have your truth. Okay. Yes. I'm thinking the same thing. Yes, you, you do. Yeah. I have another one too. Okay, good. Uh, the parachutes have not been deployed. There's time to do it. Okay. I grab the knife. All right. Three truths, three dice. Our story begins with Danny activating the manual shoot release as you suddenly feel all of the momentum, the G-force just displace immediately as you're all thrown back again. And None of us are buckled in. None of you are buckled in. <laughs> and you feel it and you hear bone snap all of you as you uh, 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 hit uh, back. I can't feel my legs. I think I'm paralyzed. And there's this muddy. I can't feel my legs. This muddy thought, this just air, that's just all the blood is gone. It takes every amount of effort. It is only the pain that is preventing you from passing out at the moment. As the G4 suddenly lessens up and you slowly start to descend. Well, slowly is definitely a. Slower than you were. Yes. What do you do? Genevieve, fuck! Ah. I'm gonna try and grab onto anything I can to brace myself against the coming impact. The impact. All right. Joseph Stacy. Uh, my back is broken and I can't feel anything past my my waist. And I'm laying like strewn about. Yeah. Just kind of, I still have the knife in my hand and I just grab a latch to hold on. Stacy. Leslie, if you can hear me, I tried. I tried to let you in. And and hopefully you're still out there. If you're still out there, the portholes open. You can come in now. Stacy. I hear you. I hear you, Leslie. You just hear your name being spoken and through the descending porthole as you come closer to the earth, you can see one of the monoliths. It's just, it's beautiful, slick, perfect form descend downwards, and there is something coming from it. You can see a pinprick of light in the darkness that is this black onyx form as you all slam straight uh, onto the ground. Uh, and uh, you being the only one that didn't have a chance to hold on, Stacy, I'm going to have you roll as you're staring out at this beautiful, wonderful thing. No successes in a one, but, 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 but. Yes. Um, I am going to burn my vice. Yes, which is? Selfish. Oh, yeah, that tracks. That tracks perfectly. <laughs> to re-roll this one. Yes, please. Um, so while I was staring at the uh, gorgeous, stunning monolith, I um, saw everybody else grabbing on and realized that none of them were smart enough to buckle in or use a seatbelt and was able to get myself to a place where I could actually buckle in. All right, let's see. No! <sighs> Three candles. Now extinguished. Two candles. Two truths. Stacey, as you get yourself in the seat, you can see this monolith, and you're looking at both Danny and Joseph. 
knowing that they will fail and you will succeed. As you sit and strap yourself in, you pull the buckle and you place the harness in front of you and you sit and you stare openly at the porthole, knowing that something is broken, but also not caring in so many ways. And you can hear them moaning and agony and pain, Joseph continuing to lament that he can't feel his legs. I can't feel my leg. Daddy, I can't feel my leg. And as this thing impacts and crashes straight into the earth, you <laughs> look into the monolith, and the last thing you see before the bent metal shoots straight through, concaving into the module itself and cuts you from the crown through to your hips is the monolith. What are you thinking as you see this last thing in front of you? I have ascended. Thank you so much for playing, Trish. Thank you for having me. I'm going to have to ask you to leave my table. Yep. Joseph, Danny, as this module impacts into the ground, you uh. watch as this split of steel, just almost like a perfect wedge, just <laughs> cleaves Stacy right in half. <gasps> and you hear uh. her mm. body slip, <laughs> sit, thwap, thwap falls onto either side of her chair, and you sit there and all you hear is the crackling of the radio and the dripping of blood. There are two truths in which to speak. Stacy normally would say the first truth, but instead, I will speak the first one. You are very close to the monoliths. A monolith. Danny. The door to the module opened in the crash. We can easily access the outside. Great. Two candles, two truths. Joseph and Danny, you lay broken on this module floor. <laughs> We gotta get out of here, Danny. Yeah, come on, come on. Danny, I, my legs are broken. I can't feel them, but just move them and I'll pull myself out. Just move my leg. Are your arms okay? My arms are okay. Okay, grab on, grab onto me. All right. And I'm, I'm gonna sling him kind of around my back, like piggyback style, so and I can get as him out. And he picks me up, and you wear my him legs on. look like two toothpicks to just. <sighs> oh. Clicked out, Just so clicked compound out. fractures out. Mm -hmm. And you carry him on your back as you inch yourself out. Ribs are broken. It hurts so bad. It just is, is agonizing, but you manage to sling him like a Jedi Master on your back as you crease out through the air airlock. And I'd like to lay him down, leaning against the outside of the module so mm -hmm. we can get our bearings. Right. <laughs> It's daytime. The light is bright and the sun is out. And the way he laid me there is that we're laying on the ground and the sun is behind the monolith, so the shadow is right next to us. Oh, this I would even say that's, I love that. Let's keep that going. It's a big monolith. Yeah. It makes a big, big shadow. shadow. And as a result, it's light, it's daytime but the monolith shadow puts you in darkness. High five. <laughs> I'd like to lean in back to the module, grab the ham radio. We need, we need help. We need anyone who can listen. We're, we're planet side now. Someone should be out there. I want to turn it on. Hello. We, we escaped the International Space Station. We're down in some 
I, I don't know. I don't know where we are, but we're near one of those big the the, the stone things. Is anyone out there? Um, I, I don't know. A police, military. Uh, anyone? Ashley? I, I, I'll take anyone right now. It would be really nice. Daddy, tell him I can't feel my legs. <laughs> we're tell injured. Him we're broken. <sighs> you twist through the dials and continue to repeat this phrase over and over. You hear a voice suddenly crisp and clear come out through the radio. Danny? T Hash, Ashley? Danny. Oh my god, is that you? Danny, where are you? I, I, I don't know, I, I got off the station. Baby, where, where, where are you right now? Are you okay? Go to it. What? Danny, just go to it. I'm gonna look at Danny talking what? right now and I'm gonna realize the radio is completely broken. It's not even on. It's not even on. And he's talking to it. Baby, what do you mean? Just, just, it's there for you. Just go to it. It's waiting. Is that where you are? Danny, you've been so good. You've done so good. But it's time, it's time to let go now. Just go to it. <laughs> As the sun tilts, I start to see the shadow is beginning to move a little bit, and I start trying to drag myself towards the light part of it yeah. away from him in the dark. At this point, you can start to hear and feel ground being displaced under you, and you actually watch in the shadow of the monolith just something long, tiny tendrils like a giant centipede as something pulls itself out of the dirt and you see a wide open lamprey style mouth with articulating tentacles <laughs> pull itself slowly out and it's crawling towards you. Danny. Oh, no, 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 no. Danny, get out of there. Danny, it's all right. It's, Danny. It's time to go. Danny, get out of there. Okay. It's coming for you, Danny. Okay. What do you do? I'm gonna go toward the creature. <clears throat> You're gonna to go towards the creature? What about you, Joseph? I am going to go away from the creature. Can I roll this one too? Yeah, it's your hope dice. It's my hope dice, and this is all I hope. Oh. One, one, if you would like to try. Yes. Can I burn this? All right, blunt. All right, blunt. Roll it. <laughs> Danny, as you stand up, dropping the headset from your hand, your wife's voice still in your ears, you can hear the sound, you can hear the calling, the deep resonating voice that is pulled into you and you walk towards the creature but it doesn't go to you it ignores you it flatly is going for joseph no don't take me please just take me there's a jealousy in your heart and you look at it <laughs> and you stare at it and you look at him as joseph you see this thing grab its tendrils, one of it lifts through your shoulder, wrapping you up, the other one pulling upon your broken leg. You can't feel it hurts, oh God, as it lifts you up and it slowly, head first, puts you inside of its mouth. And with each passing muscle, each movement, it slowly pulls you into its gullet. <laughs> and Danny, you watch as this thing is consumed, his man is consumed in front of you, and you can only weep and wish instead it was you that was there. And with that, we end this scene. Josh, thank you so much for playing. Did so well. Please leave. Danny. 
<laughs> you watch as this creature, having taken Joseph into its maw, lifts it down as it crawls back into the hole. It stands there and it looks at the receding sun as it continues to move into the light. And before the light can go back into its tiny little crevice, it finds darkness again by diving back into the rock, <laughs> leaving you alone, <laughs> leaving you here in the shadow of the monolith. You're losing a lot of blood. You are broken as you stare at this thing. <laughs> and there is no light to guide you because you have nothing. Only the silence and the bright burning light bristling on top of you. Is there anything you want to say? There is, unfortunately for you, there is death as you have nothing, no supplies, no water, no nothing, and you do not even have friends anymore around you, but you are alive, and maybe that is worse than death. What is going on in your mind? What is with you right now? I just... I just want to be with her again. And if she's, if she's with them, if Ashley is with them, then I want, I want to go with them too. You do not find them, Danny. They do not come to you. <laughs> and it is almost a week before you finally feel the last breath of your <laughs> lungs give away and your heart slowly stops to beat. You haven't moved from this spot in the time that it took you to lay down and die, hoping that any moment, any time, at one point they would come and take you. Hoping that they come and take you. I'm sorry, Ashley, I'm sorry. for playing. <laughs> There's so much I want to say, but I'll save it. For the moment, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. <sighs> I'm so sorry. There is only one thing left to do, and that is listen to the messages of our dearly departed characters. Thank you. Hi, this is Stacy Martell coming to you from the International Space Station where I don't even know if anyone's ever going to watch or listen to this. You know, I came up here thinking I could make a difference, I could educate people, maybe even win an award for this one, but with everything that's happened now, it just seems so unimportant. I can usually put a positive spin on anything, but even I can't deny what I've seen. 
I mean, is this the end of everything? No? No, I can't think like that. It will be just fine. Turn this shit off. Okay, uh, so I uh, tried collecting my thoughts and rehearsing a bit before doing this, but it all sounded like shit anyway, so I'm just gonna wing it. I don't know how everything up here is gonna go, so I wanted to broadcast this for uh, you, if you hear it, and maybe a bit for me. Um, I'm sorry, Ashley. I'm so sorry. I, I tried. I really did. The, the comms went out, and I couldn't reach you, and, and I'm not trying to make excuses, but I... Fuck, I don't know. Maybe I could have done more. I just... With how things look like they're going down there, I just hope you're okay. I love you, and I really hope you're okay. This is Dr. Genevieve Zane, log entry 134. Morale is as good as it could be, I mean, all things considered. Some power issues are becoming a nuisance. I haven't been sleeping very well. I keep getting those sleep paralysis nightmares where I, I think something's at the foot of my bed. The microorganisms I've been subjecting to harsh conditions have been behaving as expected. Up until today, one of the cultures is oddly mutated, I mean, completely unrecognizable overnight. I'm not quite sure what I'm looking at. Just like everything else around me lately. I hope supplies are coming in soon. You know what I think? I think it's all a lie. I think we were told this whole time the sun shines on us and creates the shadows. That's a lie. We are the shadows. We are the dark trails left behind. And it's up to me and this company to take us into the new light. I arranged for this mission because I wanted to show the world what we're capable of. And hopefully we have the right tools here to do it. I just hope I wasn't too late. When my father, Joshua, left me the money to create TASC, I knew I couldn't let him down. And now it's up to me to show the world that military defense spending was all worth it. And in the corporate lens, everything's got a price, including life. <laughs>